this morning will truly edify us take us to dimensions in the spirit and be glorified in Jesus name Amen. God bless you. Please be seated. Pastor, thank you. Thank you so much. It's my joy to really be part of your prayer and your fasting program. It's always an honor to do the things that we do. Very briefly this morning, I want to share um, on prayer. Matthew chapter 6. Jesus himself taught um, what theologically we call the Lord's Prayer although uh, many people may have differing perspectives but the idea is not um, the idea is not um, whether or not we're validating whether it was the Lord's prayer or so on and so forth but it was um, it's, it's amazing how Jesus mentored the disciples who would later become the apostles of the Lamb he took out time to deal with them subject after subject and in Matthew chapter 6 he comes to the issue of prayer we'll start from verse 5 very quickly and when thou prayest so he expected them to pray he expected them to be a people of prayer remember that he was showing them the systems that would make for their dominion the systems that will make for kingdom come and he was showing them the various dimensions of the kingdom that control results and so he gets to a very important subject of prayer if you read Luke's account um, the synoptic version of Luke's account it doesn't just present him as introducing the topic he was rather responding to a question they asked him to teach them to pray so for them it was not an issue of prayerlessness it was the issue of praying without results they were not prayerless but they noticed that their prayer did not seem to command the power the glory that was required or um, allocated for the prayer ministry but every time Jesus prayed they saw results and so they told him to show them how to pray right so let's go to verse 5 just pick one or two things and then we're done for this morning and when thou prayest thou shalt not be as the hypocrites are for they love to stand praying in the synagogues and in the corners of the streets that they may be seen of men verily I say unto you they have their reward six when thou prayest enter into thy closet and when thou hast shut the door pray unto thy father which is in secret and thy father which seeth in secret shall reward thee openly seven but when thou prayest use not vain repetitions he says as the heathen do for they think they shall be heard for their much speaking be not therefore like unto them for your father knoweth what things he have need of for you ask him nine now he's he's teaching them something very profound and i'll just draw uh, a little from that and that would be um, our talk for this morning after this manner it didn't say repeat these words after this manner I am showing you a protocol of prayer pattern your prayer after this after this manner therefore ye pray can we read together now one two go our father which art in heaven uh -huh. hallowed be next verse please thy will be done in earth not on earth look well in earth as it is in heaven and then our daily bread 12 and forgive us our debts as we forgive our debtors 13 lead us not into temptation but deliver us from evil then it ends by saying for thine is the kingdom the power the glory forever amen and so let's just look very briefly Jesus is teaching here and he's showing us that we should pattern our prayer after a spiritual protocol if we desire to get results number one our father our father he says when you pray don't pray to a counselor don't pray to an advisor 
You are not even just praying to God. That every time you approach prayer, there is an understanding that you must have. That you are approaching one who is called Abba. Everybody say Abba. Father. Right? So, if, if the, the revelation of the fatherhood of God is the foundation for effective prayer. Matthew chapter 7 and verse 11. Let's see what Jesus himself said about fathers. Please let's have it quickly if we can. Matthew chapter 7 and verse 11. Read with me if you're a Christian, please. One to read. And if ye being evil. Now he's speaking to men. That man intrinsically is evil. And that if you be evil, know how to give good gifts to your children. Uh -huh. How much more shall your father? That means that the, the apex of fatherhood is the ease to release. Are we together now? That one who is truly a father must be apt to give. So when you approach God as Abba, that means you are aware of his, his propensity to give. That God is not a withholder. It matters that your prayer is so constructed that when you approach God, you understand that this God is my Abba, Father. And that in praying, He will give to me. Because you have to know that he gives. Very, very important. Our the Father. The Bible tells us in Romans chapter 8 and verse 15 that God has given us his spirit whereby we cry, Abba, Father. Abba, Father. Abba, Father. Abba, Father. Do you know what Abba means? Look up, please. Abba means source. Source. When you go to God as Abba, you are saying, Lord, I'm not confused about my destiny helpers, my boss, my parents, they are channels. I come to you as my source. I'm not in confusion. I will not mix you in the multitude of helpers in my life to join the queue as though you are one of them. You are more than a helper. You are more than an advisor. You are the source. Are you getting what I'm saying now? Yes. So, you come to someone who says, I want to help you, and I'll give you a job. He signs, and tomorrow you have a job. You come to someone who gives you a contract. You come to, you come to someone who gives you an advice. And sometimes you can confuse who is really my source. And it is important that as you approach God, you approach Him with an understanding that, Lord, it is true that you use men to bless me. It is true that you use systems and structures to bless me. But I am not confused. I come to you, Abba. The source. Number two, the sustainer. The sustainer. It is not only the source, the sustainer. A man can receive nothing, the Bible says, except it be given to him. Sustainer. Number three, preserver. So it's not enough to just come to God and say, God bless me. As what? You are Abba. When you approach God, you approach Him as touching His fatherhood. Are we blessed? It's very, very powerful. So, th these are the kinds of... This is, this is Jesus teaching that there is something about your not knowing the fatherhood of God that interrupts the quality of your prayer life. You may pray, you may dissipate energy, but you are praying to one whose benevolence you are not sure of. You are praying to one who you are not even sure is as though someone has to assist God to reach you. So it affects you, but you go to God, the fountain of wisdom, you are Abba. It is within your power. We cry, Abba, Father, hallowed be your name. Hallowed be your name. Hallowed be your name. I cry, Abba, Father. Hallowed be your name. Hallowed be your name. Abba, Father. 
Have you seen little children run to their fathers? You are standing there. Their father is the one to interview you for a job. So you are being disciplined. You are being careful. You don't greet anyhow. You stand and you are behaving. And the children just run. They are not even aware of their error. They just push through everybody and they go to hug their father. Because their father is not a director of a company. Their father is Abba. He is responsible for everything including their limitations. So while you are there standing on the queue, don't open the door until you are directed. You are, your eyes are fixed on the light, waiting for a green light to prompt you. And here comes the little boy. He pushes you, opens the door, jumps to the father, opens the fridge, and the father looks at him. His love restrains any action against See, you must approach God that way. Abba, Abba. It's good to pray right, but you must be conscious of his fatherhood. More than the accuracy of your communication. God is not an examiner waiting for you to hit every button right. He is a father who is already delighted that you are approaching him. When you pray, pray after this manner. Abba, Father. Are we blessed? Number two, very quickly. The second area is hallowed be thy name. Hallowed be thy name. First Samuel chapter 2, please, and verse 30. There's a very powerful revelation there. First Samuel chapter 2 and verse 30. First Samuel. Oh dear. It says, Wherefore the Lord God of Israel said, please look up. I said indeed that thy house and the house of thy father, right? Okay, read on. I'm not sure. Okay. Should walk before me forever. Please look up. But now the Lord said, Be it far from me. For them that honor me, I will honor. Now, listen to me. To approach God boldly does not justify carelessness. That inasmuch as he is Abba, do not forget that he is also the God of the universe. Because your awareness of his fatherhood can make you to now trivialize his majesty and might. Even though he is your father, he is still God. That means that in the midst of your excitement, there must be the spirit of reverence. Hallowed be thy name. So boldness is not a license for pride and dishonor. Approaching God requires honor and understanding that the God of the universe, He holds the world in His hands and He's chosen to be my Father. So whilst I am grateful for the privilege of fellowship, I am also aware. This is a principle that not only works for God, it works for men. That regardless the privilege you have to a great man, never forget who you are talking to. Never forget who you are relating with. Sometimes we can be carried away by the simplicity and the expressions. But we must find a way of reminding ourselves that this man is a director. He's only chosen to eat lunch with me. I shouldn't forget. This man is a captain. This was the mistake of Vashti. Vashti forgot that her husband was also a king over 127 provinces. And so when he called on her, she was conscious of his husbandhood but forgot his royalty. And she paid for it with her place. Are we together now? It is important that as we approach God, we understand that he is Abba, but He is God. Are we together? Hallowed be your name. There must be a healthy communication of reverence as we deal with Him. I can speak and say, God is touching you, and His power touches you. And it's as though you are using God. You know, He loves you so much, He can act almost like a remote control, but He is God. He is God. He is God. Hallowed be thy name. Are we blessed already? Number three, very quickly. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done. Thy kingdom come. Now, notice the progression. He's teaching you to pattern your prayer after this. Number one, be aware of the fatherhood of God as source, sustainer, defender, protector. Are we together? Number two, he says, 
approach him even though with an understanding of his fatherhood you must approach him with honor and with reverence number three according to the program of god you must prioritize the things of the kingdom even above your need look at this the very next prayer is your kingdom come the word kingdom means the sphere of the governing influence of a king I desire to see the influence of your power, your glory, your culture. Did you know that when his kingdom comes, he will not even allow you to get to a point where you will say, give us this day. Because in the kingdom coming, there is already a system that should not even allow you to have a need. So that the fact that you have to ask for food is a sign that something about his kingdom has not been enforced. The angels don't pray for food. The saints in heaven don't pray for their needs to be met. Because it's a fair where his kingdom has come. So he's saying the better prayer point is not give me school fees. The better prayer point is not give me this. Focus on allowing the spare, my governing influence, to be domiciled within your life. And if that happens, you may not need to pray some other prayers again. Are we together? His kingdom come. His kingdom come. His kingdom come. For as long as the prodigal son was under the jurisdiction or within the jurisdiction of his father, he had no lack. Notice that lack started in his life when he carved out a niche for himself outside of the influence of his father. Provided he was within the sphere of the influence of the father, there was no lack. Are we together? Thy kingdom come. When his kingdom comes, his culture, his life, everything that happens that negates the Christ is proof that his kingdom has not been established within that. And then he says, your kingdom come Thy will be done. Now, if, if you do not look at it in context, you would think he's saying your kingdom come and then thy will be done. The correct expression is your kingdom come by your will being done. The only way his kingdom comes is when his will. The word will there is the root word logos, where you get the word, the intention of a man that seeks for expression. Your will be done. Everywhere his will is done, his kingdom comes. Everywhere his will is done. Heaven is heaven simply because the will of the Father as the monarch of the universe finds expression unrestrained. And everywhere there is a violation of his will, it is judged immediately. That's what makes heaven heaven. So the Bible says, thy kingdom come, and thy will, by thy will be done. I, it now tells you the location where the will should be done. In earth. Not on earth. In earth. The first earth is you. Not the ground. Because you are made out of that earth. So the kingdom come, and his will be done in you, as that sample of the earth. And then across the territory. Because if His will is done in your life, there are certain, your life will become an expression of heaven. The perfection, the beauty, the glory of heaven, literally, will find expression in your life. So He's teaching us to pray now. And He's saying, Abba Father, approach Him as Father. Approach Him with honor. Prioritize the reality of His government. Finding expression within your life and across your sphere. Are we together now? Yes. Thy will be done. Thy will be done. In earth. Thy will be done. In my life. Thy will be done. In my life. God only defends his will. Not just your desire. He defends his will. Let it be done in my life. Let it be done in my finances. And the will of God is not a mystery. Colossians chapter 1 verse 9. It tells us Paul himself. Paul is praying. And he's saying that for, I, I pray for you. I bow my knees and I pray for you. That you be filled number one. With the knowledge of his will. With the knowledge of his will. Paul is saying the will of God for the believer today is not a mystery. The will of God is captured all through scripture. His intent for you. I know the thought that I think towards you, Jeremiah 29 and verse 11, thoughts of peace or good and not of evil to bring you a future and an expected end. Hallelujah. So his will is not a mystery. 
speaking through the apostle beloved i wish above all things that ye prosper and be in health even as thy soul prospers the will of god was personified in jesus the christ when jesus walked upon the earth he was the logos of god in action so everything Jesus did was an expression of the intent of the Father. When he healed the sick, it was a revelation of the Father's desire to see that there be no sick people. When he lifted people, when he supplied bread, um, you know, five loaves, two fish, strongly to feed 5,000 people, it was proof that he was a God that desired the saints to walk in abundance. When he wept at the funeral, it was a proof of his compassion. That he was not a father that would rejoice over the pain of his children. Jesus was a correction of our idea about God. Because until his manifestation, the prophets gave us different pictures about God. And in many instances, they were wrong themselves. Because they were learning God. And they did not have the investment of the Spirit to the degree that would allow for perfect revelation. So they attributed many things, even things that were from Satan to God. Everything that was higher than the scope of science, the three-dimensional realm, there was a mix. Some of them mixed their work with God and divination. And so it, 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 it aberrated our understanding of God. And Jesus came as a reference, the standard. In other words, use my life to correct your perception about God. Are we together? The will of God personified in the Christ. So the logos of God given to us today by the Spirit is a compendium of the will of God. So that as we search scripture, we find God's intent. It is dangerous to depend on people to suggest to you what they think the will of God is. Because their suggestion will come from their pain, their limitation, the progression of their knowledge. But forever, O oh Lord, thy word is settled. And so I can find written here the will of God. Then by the agency of the Spirit, I can understand His will for my life. When I understand the will of God for my life, my assignment is to posture myself in a way and manner that allows the word, the will of God to find expression. And everywhere that happens, the kingdom has come. Are we blessed? Yes, sir. Thy will be done. Let me touch on two more. I may not finish. And then we'll pray. Amen. Are we blessed? So your priority should see his will. Should be to see his will. In the, now, the next, what's the next verse? Give us this day. This is where your need comes. Look at the protocol. Look at the order. Now, let me tell you how many people pray. Especially Africans and Nigerians. This right there is the author the finisher of our prayer. So we just come in with a very quick preamble. Lion of the tribe of Judah, Rose of Sharon. We don't even know what we are saying. We're just, it's, just, it's just an introduction to get things out of the way. And then we say, Lord, now we are praying. And our prayers are full of wise sayings, sympathetic talks, and all those kinds of things don't produce power. Oh Lord. You are in heaven. Is it that you are not, you know, it's wonderful, but, but we need to learn how to pray. Jesus is mentoring us to pray. And he said, give us this day. Isn't it amazing that God is so caring that he's concerned about your daily bread, not weekly. The best that many governments can give you is monthly. And here he's ready to load you with benefits daily, daily, daily. A dimension of benevolence you must be aware of. That means if day to day you are being robbed of your supply, you have a right to know something is going on. You are faithful to ensure that there is an allocation. He proved this when he sent the bread of angels from heaven. You see, I hope you know that bread is already processed wheat. He processed it already, turned it into bread, and sent it to them. There are times that God will make your farm to produce well. But there are times He knows that you don't need crops, you need bread. He will convert the bread and give you directly. There are times God can give you ideas, and then you can grow the idea through three, four, five years to a great business. But there are times you need money directly. You don't need any idea anywhere. You need an intervention. The urgency 
will not allow you to process any idea and make mistakes and learn. You just need bread directly. He can give both grace to your farm and bread to your hands. Give us this day. It's a revelation. Give us this day. Lord, I need to pay my rent. Thank God for the business idea. I will look at it carefully when my rent is settled. But for now, I have two days Giving me an idea from heaven is wonderful, but it takes time to build. Give us this day. Somebody say, give me this day. Hmm. Not give me this week. Not give me this month. He understands the value and the power of time. All times don't allow all things to happen. No, no. There are times that if you do not, if you cannot capture certain things in a moment, it may never come back again. Give me this day. Not this week. Give me this day. That means God is caring enough to allow that your needs be met. Listen, sometimes we think that the prayer that, that cries that our needs be met is carnal and all of that. In an attempt to prioritize the kingdom. Just like I taught you now. In an attempt to show that we love God and we seek to see His kingdom come. We are ashamed and afraid to talk about our needs. No, there is a provision in dealing with God where He responds to you too. Thank God for the evangelism. Thank God for building churches. Thank God for all of the projects here. Thank God for the souls. But Lord, as I do these things, I remain focused but I pray that my needs be met. I want to see the fees of my children paid. I want to also see that I rise and I grow. I want to see that I attend to the things that make for life and for godliness. It was scripture that says his divine power has given us all things that pertain unto life and godliness. Not life alone, not godliness alone. Are we together? Give us this day our daily bread can I touch on one more thank you next verse now this year I can spend the whole day dealing with this and forgive us our debts as we forgive our debtors the revelation here is a very complex revelation the revelation is not God yet the revelation is first you that every man is a debtor. Listen. <laughs> Forgive me my debt by bringing me into the awareness that the same reason why you need to forgive me is the same reason why I need to forgive others. My inability to help myself. Are we together now? This here is a revelation that number one, all men are humans. We are empowered, we are humans, we are empowered by the Spirit, but that men are frail and they grow weary. Listen, the understanding that we are debtors alone will make you to never be surprised at the disappointments, the betrayal. You know, sometimes we act as though you did this. No, the understanding that all men are weak, all men are frail, will take away the heartbreak that comes from the disappointment. Jesus is teaching you here. He is saying maintain a posture where you are not surprised at the behavior of people. That you can raise a child today and he can look at you tomorrow and act like you never invested in his life. He is saving you heart attack. He is saving you stress. He is keeping you healthy by giving you this revelation. Forgive our debt as we forgive. That means that captured in our understanding of prayer we must know that we are dealing with a realm and a system where men are frail just like we ourselves so when we approach god and say lord you can see this again the bible says he knows we are dust the spirit of god was put in us but in our frame we are dust the best of every man is still a man we are only men helped by god that means in dealing with God, perfection is not required. It is sincerity and brokenness. Perfection is exhausting and unnecessary. No man with, in the long run sustains the ability to be flawless enough to meet the standard of God. Your humanity will be revealed in greed, in lust, 
in pride, in pain. Are we together? You come from a family where you were struggling growing up. Now you become a millionaire or a billionaire. That tendency to prove a point to someone who trivialize you one day will crop up. So he's teaching us here. This is not about forgiveness. This is about an understanding that we are frail. Are we together? Let me tell you this. The happiest and the most peaceful people on earth are those who know that all men are men. So while they tell you, Jesus, come and become king because you turn five loaves and two fish to feed 5,000 people, Jesus is also aware that one day they will say, crucify him. So the day they said it, he stood there. And he didn't look at them and say, Father, let fire come from heaven and consume them. Because he was aware that they were all men. The same Peter who looked at him and said, no, 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 I love you so much, you are, I will not even allow you to wash my feet, was the same person who argued before a young lady, calling her woman to betray and deny Jesus. Now is the same Peter, three days later, who looks at Jesus and comes to him and says, ah, I'm a sinner. And Jesus said, that's not the issue, Peter, let's go and eat. Simon by Jonah, lovest thou me more than this. He didn't even discuss the issue. He will not suffer my foot to be moved. I carry your presence everywhere. Who am I? Your mind is so full of me. Mortal man, awesome God. Mortal man, I'm just there. But you are the awesome God. Listen, it's not a revelation to negate the fact that you've been exalted with Christ. It's a description of the tendency that comes by reason of wearing this body. That this body has tendencies that you better be aware of before it surprises you. And so in dealing with people, don't be surprised if they try to cheat you. In dealing with people, don't be surprised when a Christian brother tries to defraud you. It is a reality, it's a tendency that outside of the assistance of the Spirit will happen over time. Forgive us our debts. So when you see great people keep quiet, even when they have the power to respond, it's not weakness. It's an understanding. There is superior knowledge. Are we together now? Yes. Listen, let me tell you, that's why I said we can dwell here all day. Because it's a very powerful thing. You must maintain an allowance for the humanity of men. This is the revelation Jesus is giving us. That to be effective in prayer, you must approach God even whilst you trust that He continues to grant you access to His mercy. You must likewise. The Bible in Matthew chapter 18, okay, I have just about 10 minutes and we have to wrap up. Matthew 18, but let's look at it very quickly. Matthew chapter 18 from verse 21 is a long reading. We'll not go into all the reading. I'll just speak out a few things. Now, Peter came and was speaking to him about the subject of forgiveness. Are we together? He says, Lord, how oft shall my brother sin against me and I forgive him? Till 70 times? You see that Peter was disturbed. I'm sure someone had offended Peter. And he wanted a justification. He was about to take an action. And he said, Lord, we need to discuss this issue of forgiveness. And then, Jesus, when you read down to 35, um, Jesus now describes to him 70 times 70. And then, he now brings a parable to illustrate. Are we together? He talks about a man who was owing a king. And then the king granted him pardon and he went to someone who was owing a far less amount and continued to oppress him. And eventually the story got to the king and he called him and made him to pay more. It's the attitude of people. Listen, let me tell you this. You must sustain compassion in dealing with people. Men are human. Men are frail. Men are limited. That is true for men of God. That is true for business people. That is true for your boss in the office. That is true for your director. That is true for the head of your department. That is true for the head of your unit. And that is true for you. Truthfully, it is true for you. 
It's amazing the audacity we have. Did you know that so many people on earth do not even have the spiritual and the moral credence? We live in a generation where everybody is correcting everybody. Everybody is correcting every man of God. Everybody is correcting every businessman. It's as though that's all that happens. Everybody wants to show who is wrong. Yes, we are all men. It's a revelation that we must find a way of convincing ourselves before we make a mess of ourselves before the world. Our humanity is not an embarrassment. It's an advantage. It brings glory to God. So when we you see an ordinary man producing results that only God can produce. Then Galatians 1.24 becomes a reality. And they glorified God in me. Are you understanding the prayer of Jesus now? Forgive us our debts. Forgive us our debts. Every time... You do not give allowance for the humanity of men. You are sowing seeds whose harvest will catch up with you. Because in time, every one of us will have an opportunity to watch our humanity find expression. And that includes Jesus. Watch this. Jesus is God, the Logos of God. Now he's come in the flesh. And Jesus is hungry. And he stands before a fig tree. Remember, patience is the fruit of the Spirit. And remember, Jesus is full of the Spirit. And he stands before a tree, terribly hungry as a man. And there's no fig. What did he do? Ah, Jesus, where did you keep your patience? Dear Jesus, where did you keep... I mean, King of Kings, the fruit of the Spirit. Couldn't you at least give the tree a chance? No man eat of you again. Number two, he enters a temple and he sees people doing business. Where did he keep his compassion? Why didn't he politely report as a very good citizen of Rome? He took a whip and flogged every one of them. And after flogging them, he said, oh sorry, it's just my temple. I said, no, 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 no. I'm still not apologetic. My house shall be called a house. Of... I mean, you love Jesus only because he's in heaven now. If you were on earth... And you were. <laughs> Carry your presence everywhere. Who am I? Your mind is so full of me. Mortal man, us. I'm just a woman. But you are the us. Listen, by this. By this revelation alone, some of you need to go back and say, Daddy, I'm sorry. I know that you did your best. You were not educated, and yet you did your best to allow that at least I went to school. I know you were a drunkard. I've been running my mouth saying all kinds of things. I'm glad I came to church this morning. I understand you are human. Because you are about to have your child too. Your wife is already pregnant with twins. You don't know what it means to manage two children at a go. So before you close the door of compassion towards yourself, quickly express it towards others. See, let me tell you, when you become critical, the day your humanity shows up, the world will crucify you. When you sow seeds of compassion, you are not helping the people. You are helping yourself. Because a day will certainly come when you will need help. When Jesus stood by the woman at the well and was talking, he was also prophetically preparing for his days. At least there was a witness that stood with him at the cross. Everybody did not leave him. Be careful. When you talk as though your humanity is already out of you. Listen, the treasure is in earthen vessels. Elijah may be temperous, but he's still a prophet. Moses may be a stammer and full of temper, but he's still a prophet. Abraham may have a problem with women, but he's still a friend of God. Hmm. You don't like what I'm sharing this morning? Listen. This is no justification for carelessness. It is the truth. We are all men. You love me today. 
Apostle Joshua Selman and I love you too. You've not seen me when I'm hungry. You've not seen me when I'm tired. Are we together now? Yes. Have you seen God when he's angry? Arise, O God, and let your enemies <laughs> be scattered. Now, that's a part of God you don't want to see. He's not just a God of love, a wonderful God. He's also a God of vengeance. It's just that he has chosen that you will not see certain dimensions of him. He's redirected it to some other people. But it's still part of him. Who do you think built the lake of fire? The lake of fire was not an invention of Satan. It's part of the kingdom of God. Built by God's intelligence. Are we together? Forgive us our sin as we forgive those who sin against us. So you take away the stress. I know you betrayed me, but I forgive. And God says, you are acting like me. You are acting like me. It's a revelation. So let's recap and then we pray. Number one, our Father. Now, it would not just be a creed that you chant, Our Father who art in heaven. No. It contains a protocol to touching the heart of God. Abba Father, you're my source. You're my sustainer. My director is a channel. My business is a channel. It stopped producing because it became Abba. The ATM and the money in it was put by someone. So you stand and remove money from the ATM, but you are aware that the ATM is a channel. It's an extension of a bank. The real owner is not a machine standing there. No, the machine was put. So it, when money finishes, you are not afraid because the source is still coming back. So when someone says, okay, you are no longer working for me, you don't stand and say, so my life, am I going to die? No, 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 no. There are too many channels. The source. Are you getting the idea now? And then we approach God with reverence. With reverence. And understanding that he is Abba, but he is God. Number three, we prioritize his kingdom. That which brings honor and glory to the Father. That our lives are bent on seeing that the Christ be revealed and glorified. Give us our daily bread. I expect favor every day. Every day. Every day. Now this is the basis of, of the confessions that we make. I truly expect favor every day. If within 24 hours or 48 hours nobody favors me, I will talk to God about it. What happened? There are 7.2 billion people on earth. What happened to the channels? Everybody cannot be disobedient. People have four or five or six multiple streams of income and it's enough to make them billionaires. Now, there are 7.2 billion people on earth. I should have gotten to a level where... I produce in season and out of season because as one person is sowing another person should be receiving a harvest and God so when God says he would daily load you with benefits is because he studied his system and found out that there is this there is an endless supply there are times you wait for rainy season and dry season but he shall be like a tree that is planted by the streams of water you no longer wait for a season to determine your fruitfulness you are planted permanently by the streams of water. Hallelujah. Please rise up, hold hands with someone, and let's pray. This is my final session with us here at this campus. And I hope that this understanding will add to our knowledge of God. That when we pray, it is important. Take your eyes this morning away from your job as your source, your business as your source. No, we are dealing with Abba here, the Lord of all creation. Psalm 24 says the earth is the Lord's 
and its fullness thereof, the walls, the systems, and all they that dwell therein. All of our requests will only need Abba to respond to us and then it comes. He will use channels. He will use a job. He will use men. He will use businesses. He will use systems and structures. But never confuse systems as your source. All blessings come from God. He is the Father of all things. Your lifting this year, your expansion will not come from a physical place. It will come through a business. It will come through all of the value-adding systems and structures that you have, your businesses, etc. But let me tell you, all blessings come from God. Are we together? Two prayer points very quickly, and I speak of our lives. We're done for this morning, and we prepare for the next service. Prayer point number one. Father, grant me a revelation of your fatherhood. You are Abba. I repent from making you join the queue in my life. You are not a stream of income. You are not a destiny helper. You are more than that. You are not a business idea. You are not just a supporter of my destiny. You are the foundation. I come to you. Someone is praying. Abba. Kalibas Kalibra Hasede Balatushiada. Skande Brede Geste de Balatushiada Brahastada Bashiya. Abba Father. Abba Father. Abba Father. Skalabandes Kabarushiata Hasede Balatushiada. Abba Father. If you are my source, then I agree that this year is my year of vision and expansion. If it is true that you are my source, then I agree that this year I will rise in a limitless dimension. The source of my anointing, the source of my strength, the source of my favor. You will use men, you will use systems, but you are Abba. Hallelujah. Prayer point number two. Very, very instructive. I missed one step and I apologize. I just remember the Holy Spirit just reminded me. We don't have the time. Who art in heaven? I wish I had the time to deal with that. Who art in heaven means I am not in your realm you will need faith to approach me who art in heaven is a revelation that you are operating from a duality of realms i reside in a dimension god does not live in eternity no in the beginning god created the heavens and the earth that means he was not in any of those spheres. you can't create what you are inside you have to be outside of it he only chose to make heaven his throne. The Bible tells us simply that he lives in a realm of light. Light. So he's saying, I am relating with you, although the Holy Spirit comes to be an extension of my presence in your atmosphere and in your life. My person, I'm domiciled, seated on a throne that is in heaven. And so you will need to understand the system that makes for interaction. There are times before, you know, phones became modern. There were times where you would send an MMS. And someone who is holding a phone, the, the phone, the device is holding may not have the system to convert what he's saying. And it will just appear as nonsense. So if you do not understand the technology of conversion, we may not be able to talk. Who art in heaven? It's an information. You need to know how God speaks. You need to know how you talk to him. For instance, God speaks to men like he's speaking to himself. God will not tell you, go and build a house. He'll say, make sure you thank me because the house is built. That's how God talks. So if you do not understand the speakings of God, 
He can look at you now and tell you about an assignment that you will start 10 years ago as if you will start it this evening. If you do not understand the system of the speakings of God, you will miss timings in your life. You will hear correct things, but their executions will either be too early or too late. Who art in heaven? But that's not the prayer point. The prayer point is forgive us this day. I give you a revelation. Lord, the grace to forbear with men. The grace to be tolerant. The grace to factor in the humanity of men as we deal with. We are not much in ourselves. It is the Holy Ghost that is the advantage. He is the one who has translated us. If there is anything God worthy in us, it was brought about not by an act of our own effort. It is the ministry of the Holy Spirit. Lift your voice and pray. Grace to forbear with my husband. Grace to forbear with my wife. Grace to forbear with my children. We have obtained mercy and grace from God and we must sustain the fortitude to communicate the same. Shabarus Kalibranda Kabarusa Tia Shalaprasya. The grace Talis Kabranda Kapaha Salaparusiata. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. This is my final session. Permit me one minute to add more. Give me this day. Lord, activate favor at another level in my life. Activate favor daily. Daily. Thank you for my monthly salary. Thank you for the quarterly yields that my business brings. But I want to step into a realm of supplies by the Spirit where it is daily. This provision is captured in prayer. If someone pray, lift your voice and declare by the Spirit. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. Let me just speak over your life and we are done. In the name of Jesus Christ, the Son of the Living God, I decree and declare. Please be sensitive. Just one minute I want to speak. Believe in what comes upon you. We are made by the investments of the Spirit that resides upon us. By the power of the highest, I stretch my hands over this auditorium and those who are watching. The grace to shift you to a new dimension in the Spirit. Receive that grace now. Take that grace now. In the name of Jesus. I prophesy favor upon every one of us. Please listen to me. In the name of Jesus, beginning from today, step into realms of favor. I release upon you the grace, the spirit of prayer and supplication. The anointing to pray and command your heavens and command your territory. Receive that grace now. In the name of Jesus. Everything that does not represent the Christ in your life. I stand right now in the name of Jesus and I declare it departs from your life now. By this time next year, in the name of Jesus, please believe, return back ten times better. Financially, ten times better. Spiritually, ten times better. In the name of Jesus, I multiply your influence by the Spirit. In the name of Jesus Christ. Hear me. This year, everybody who fights you goes down instantly. Every climate of death and disfavor, every climate that does not represent the atmosphere of heaven, within your family and around your vicinity, in the name of Jesus, the Son of the living God, I banish that atmosphere from your life. Can I speak over your finances? In the name of Jesus, I believe that the body of Christ is entering into a level of supply. And the reason is because of the demand. Please, I want you to believe. 
I know what I'm saying. Find a way of believing the prayer that I pray for you. In the name of Jesus. The same way a raven brought bread for Elijah at Brook Cherry. I declare by the Spirit of the Living God, step into a strange dimension of supply. Step into a supernatural dimension of supply. I empower your businesses. I empower your jobs. I empower your visions, your dreams, your ideas. In the mighty name of Jesus. I will multiply them. They will not be few. I will glorify them. They will not be small. May the Lord bless you. May the Lord increase you. In Jesus' name. To the God of all flesh, we bow, we worship. Let your name be lifted. Let our King be lifted. tonight that you be enthroned in our lives I pray that you bless your people scattered all around this place and across different nations of the world different parts of this nation bless lift equip build let there be healings let there be deliverances I pray oh God that your people will experience the fullness of your power in the name of Jesus Christ Amen and Amen. God bless you. You're very welcome. Please be seated. I want us in one minute to just appreciate all those following us online. They may not be able to see us, but they can hear our clap. Thank you. Thank you so much. Let's honor them. Thanks to the power of technology. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. Tonight I want your spirit to be very sensitive. I want to, it's a prayer meeting. We are going to pray tonight. But I want to share with you a few things that I consider will truly, truly empower us. You know, I, I sat back and I was thinking today, just thinking of the 
the topics the teachings that God has brought from this place to the body of Christ especially to us here different aspects of the life of the kingdom from prayer to excellence to success to spirituality to warfare to finances to family life the Lord has been lavish granting us access to deep secrets the mysteries of the kingdom I was teaching the school of ministry students and um, I taught them something that I think is, is, is good for us to know I said um, every true apostolic ministry must be able to communicate a dimension of the revelation of God to a generation in every dispensation there is a dimension of the dealings of God that he apportions for that generation to know about him and it is part of the apostolic ministry to be able to capture that dimension of the understanding of God that he has apportioned for a people and to be able to accurately teach God's people so that they having that understanding will come into that experience praise the Lord and um, honestly God has been faithful to us granting us access every time I sit back and I listen to the testimonies I look at the lives of so many people here and looking at the things that God has done what God is doing I get text messages every day from people across several parts of this nation around the world just communicating their gratitude for what the teachings the meetings have done and for me I am deeply deeply humbled and tonight he will show us that path again never be tired of learning the mysteries of the kingdom the mysteries of the kingdom are the secrets of God the mysteries of the kingdom are how men rise that's how men become powerful in this system hallelujah Paul said I went up by revelation not by desire I went up by revelation so when you access the truths of the kingdom they have a way of making you powerful it is God's design that in every territory scattered across the earth there will be men and women who have paid the price to be his image bearers in reality that at every given point of our lives and our environment that he must find an envoy somebody that can allow the multifaceted possibilities of God to find expression within a given territory the kingdom only comes when God is able to find sufficient men who have aligned themselves sufficiently to his purposes through knowledge and obedience when you can find a man who has paid that price of alignment then you see the beauty of the power and the glory of God displayed within a territory the revelation of God that is seen in a territory is not all that God is it is the limitation that the aligned vessels have provided he will have to work with the vessels that are available at any given time are we together now so God can step into a place like Zaria and never be able to manifest his healing dimension never be able to manifest himself as a deliverer that does not mean he cannot heal it doesn't mean he cannot deliver but the level of alignment it takes for a vessel to allow him release that possibility he cannot find it so he will have to make do with what is available but happy and blessed is any man who pays the price of alignment to be able to be an effective host of God's glory allowing every dimension of God that he desires to find expression to find expression and this personally is the theme for my life that there will be nothing God seeks to do in a territory that he would not be able to do just because I am not aligned enough and so we continue to press daily we press through knowledge we press through desire we take advantage of his grace and mercy it's like a ladder we keep climbing and we are being transformed we are being enlarged our capacities are 
uh, uh, we experienced that expansion in the spirit and we are able to host more of him then you find out that your life becomes an effulgence of a sign and a wonder the reality of that immortal dimension of the workings of God in your life starts becoming glaring it becomes clear to people that this is not a normal human being and they are not lying because divinity is swallowing you up gradually and you are beginning to manifest possibilities of someone who is obviously under the influence of a spirit like you see someone manifesting under the anointing ordinarily you don't have the capacity to move in that kind of speed when you see someone manifesting unusual strength you know that that is another agency through him every time you align in the spirit you help to advance the purposes of God let me tell you something God is searching for men he still is searching for men never should be wallowing that deception that because there are many churches there are many programs happening it means that God is finding a people no alignment is not something that um, is a costly exercise it's a costly sacrifice alignment is one of the hardest things for a believer to do because it will require pruning it will require death it will require discipline it will require commitment it will cost you your tears it will cost you your appetites but the end thereof is glory so the bible says that i reckon that the sufferings of this present time right romans 8 and verse 18 i reckon i come to terms with the fact that the sufferings the constraints of this present time you are on your way to becoming something there is a revelation in the heart of the father that you should become and he says on your way to becoming that thing there will be constraints you will cry it will cost you are we together now obedience is costly very costly and so it will constrain you and when that happens he says for i reckon that the sufferings of this present time he gives you hope he says it's not worthy to be compared with the glory that shall be revealed in you when you watch a woman pregnant the constraints she may have to spit when she doesn't have to spit she may have to go through all kinds of constraints but give her nine months in that condition the moment she gives birth to a child she becomes an object of celebration people come around to look at the miracle of another life through a woman that's how people will gather around your life one day and wonder the level of alignment it would take to manifest the kind of anointing and glory that you're manifesting listen let me tell you something spending time in the presence of god has value in every wise it has monetary value it has influence value it has time redemption value there is no time spent in the presence of god that is a waste away with that religious proposition that people bring that when you wait in god's presence you are busy people stay in god's presence and they are looking at their watches as though they have something to do most of the things we seek can only be found in his presence only be found in his presence it pays to wait and while we wait it pays to hear him because for every time he speaks he redeems your future for every time he speaks he grants you access to rise that ladder of power that ladder of grace hallelujah it says grace and peace be multiplied through the knowledge not just through your desire grace unction we want power we want to see the glory of god the effulgence of his person only a lazy and unserious student will attend lectures for four weeks and say i'm tired no you continue why because there is a goal you know that one day you aim for something and so like a man who wants to win the olympic you press you press there are times that you will have to go for the lectures in the rain 
but you overlook the inconveniences of the moment are we together i want you to pray in one minute and cry and say lord i'm here again continue the training continue the dealing make me wiser make me better let me encounter another dimension of your anointing another dimension of your glory spirit of the living god i have come tonight to align myself the more this is the school of the spirit i have come make me powerful open my eyes activate my senses in the spirit place something upon my life that my generation will live to celebrate let me not pass as an ordinary person let a deposit of eternity be upon me mm. do something in my life that will cost me it will it will last me my lifetime i have to eat of the bread of the spirit this is bethel the place where the spirit of god will grant you fresh manna fresh manna fresh manna he told the prophet eat for the journey is far you will need that mystery you will need that revelation the fierceness of life will not allow you to learn in the face of battle you will need to be prepared the fierceness of life will not allow you to be searching for mysteries when the trouble comes you must be equipped so that before it comes you know what to apply that you have capacity to read the writings on the wall and know what to do and what to say he said jesus himself knew what to do hallelujah please sit down listen it is costly to start looking for answers when the trouble comes you see sometimes the trouble has the capacity of destroying you and will not give you a chance to learn what law to overcome you prepare for battle before battle you don't prepare for battle during battle are we together don't wait until they tell you your wife cannot give birth and then you now run and try to find the mysteries that can be able to navigate another part and cause your wife to give birth don't wait until they drive you from work and then you now say what is the mystery of favor again no you are too late surround yourself with mysteries like chariots so that when the devil fires his arrow before it gets to you a revelation you have in store will arise the the shield listen that shield is a defense whether you are sleeping or awake you have a bad dream you are not even praying a scripture just fires from your dream realm he shall keep his angels charge over me don't react to things when they come are we together now yes don't wait until the day they tell you oh something happened and you are now panicking no god is equipping us with the mysteries that will prepare us so that nothing surprises you someone comes and meets you and says we're in trouble and you say what happened rain washed our house you say glory be to god don't worry there is a system in the spirit where we can remedy for that constraint listen your confidence in life is based on the the mysteries of the kingdom that you are equipped with fear is a product of ignorance you will always be afraid when you perceive that you are not in control of a situation this is the reason for fear you never fear anything you have control over ignorance gives the devil control over every aspect of our lives so we don't know whether we are going to live or die we say we don't know whether we will be rich or poor we don't know whether we will be successful or failures we don't know whether people will favor us or not God cannot keep you to walk in a system surrounded by such confusion and ignorance and then tell you to not fear. No. The antidote to fear is knowledge. Knowledge. So that when your uncle looks at you and says, I can't help you again, I'm sorry. You know how, you say, uncle, thank you. Thank you for what you have done so far. Because you have a mystery that 
every good and perfect gift comes from above it only comes through men not from men so if one man is not available heaven is still available and he can find another man that revelation alone settles you so you are not jumping around and saying uncle what can we do that's a foolish and stupid way of speaking it's like going to a filling station all fuel comes from the ground not the filling station so if the filling station packs up we know that there's still fuel in nigeria all you need to do is look for another filling station are we together now may god grant us knowledge see the bible says wisdom and knowledge shall be the stability once you find out that your life is a product of fear and panic it's not because you are young or old it's not because you are a civil servant or a businessman it's not because you are living in the north or south uh -uh. it's because you have not sustained the understanding that gives you confidence nobody is born with confidence it's a resultant effect of something joy is a product of something that you know fear is a product of something that you know or something that you don't know hallelujah please sit down i have such passion to see us grow in the spirit so we don't just deceive ourselves and say i'm a spiritual man a spiritual man is not is not something ambiguous there are exact standards that can measure spirituality spirituality is not something that one man hides in the pocket and say i am spiritual no there are clear spiritual standards if they have been met you are spiritual if they have not been met you are not spiritual it's as simple as that hallelujah that's why we labor to make sure that the atmosphere is set week in week out because we know that someone's destiny is dependent on what is shared here someone's life is dependent on what is shared here this is an issue of life and death it's not just an issue of a voluntary thing no it says they are alive to those who find them that means those who don't find them can die are we together now life is spiritual that's why the bible says everything listen it says everything that is done in the house of god must be done from a standpoint of spiritual mindedness this is not my teaching but i just felt a need to do that everything in the house of god must be consecrated and it must be done under the influence of the anointing otherwise it will add to jeopardizing the atmosphere and not allow god's presence find expression if you are a cleaner in the house of god you must clean under the anointing to contribute to making the atmosphere set you can't say i'm not a member of prayer department i'm just a keyboardist this thing this gentleman is playing is not just music if his personal secret place his personal altar has a problem the sound that will come out from there will obstruct what god is doing in your spirit he will be playing the same thing and wonder why it's not edifying you because he's playing his secret place amplifying it to people he's not playing music a gentleman holding a camera like this and he's not doing it spiritual you will be surprised at what dimension of interruption such carnality can provide in the spirit and stop the anointing of the spirit I, I'm, I'm, he can do his work but if it is not done spiritually the protocol people standing if they are just standing like employed people you see that's why you are a pastor here let me teach you a big secret value spirituality more than talent and gifts talent and gifts are secondary to spirituality nobody should serve in the house of god just because he's talented no your talent is inconsequential as far as your spirituality is concerned talent only becomes useful when you are dealing with spiritual people so we have our churches and our groups and ministries full of very very gifted people 
but all kinds of spiritual obstructions. You see someone who hold a mic, beautiful voice, but you can't tell why your spirit is resisting what is coming from him. You love the song, but something about the voice, there is no physical reason why your spirit should not receive it. Something about an atmosphere that he or she is carrying or not carrying is responsible for that. That's why we pray. That's why we wait in his presence. It's not just to increase skill. It's so that we can come with the atmosphere of heaven. And everything that is communicated to you, even if it is something you have had before, it comes with a fresh anointing. It comes with a fresh atmosphere. And it can cause transformation. You are not in ministry if you cannot host the presence of God. No. Any church, anybody that cannot host the presence of God in their meetings, capture the presence of God, is a cinema. It's a complete waste of time. So everything must be done under the anointing. We have trained the workers and we still encourage them all the time. Be spiritual. As an usher, you are not just holding people under the anointing. You are not just cleaning seats. You are spiritual. Are we together now? Someone's destiny is dependent on the spirituality of your service. Not just your service. The spirituality of it. Someone's destiny is dependent on the spirituality of my teaching. My preaching. Not just the dispensing of gifts. But the spirituality of it. That's what can bring the transformation. And bring the miracles. I just thought that it's good that we remind ourselves. It's not so much about skill. It's not so much about action. But the, the fire, the passion, the presence, the glory that backs up what we do. That's what produces the results. Tonight, I want to teach very briefly on the altar of prayer. Pay attention, I'm going to share something with you that will bless your life. The altar of prayer. I want us to understand the mystery of altars. Oh, speak from the heavens and the earth will see. Oh, speak from the heavens and the earth will hear. My altar is calling you. Oh, God, my altar is calling you. Oh God, my altar is calling you. Oh God, take my praise. Oh God, take my praise. Hallelujah. Listen. The body of Christ is full of a lot of ignorance when it comes to the issue of prayer, when it comes to the issue of warfare, when it comes to the issue of the interaction between the realm of the spirit and the earth realm. There is gross ignorance in the body of Christ as to the mysteries that are responsible for these operations. That's what I've been seeking to do. To teach us and help us understand how men can contact the realm of the spirit. Because man by design is the only entity that on legal grounds has the authorization to make contact with the realm of the spirit and make contact with the physical realm at will. Every other entity needs a system of authorization. Are we together now? altars most people do not know what altars are 
and for most people when you hear altar you just think oh it's just these ignorant prayer ministries around that are just looking for a way you you will die like a chicken when you are ignorant of the mystery of altars there is no great man who does not understand this whether he admits it openly or not is a different thing but let me tell you there is no man doing business in this kingdom or in the secular world who does not understand the mystery of altars pay attention to what you will learn and you will see triumph in 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 ways that will shock you an altar is a system of authorization i want to share a few things with you about altars an altar is a system of authorization an altar is not just a monument it is a system of authorization an altar is a platform write it down where the realm of the spirit makes contact with the physical realm on legal grounds an altar is a platform where the realm of the spirit makes contact with the physical realm on legal grounds i'm taking out time for us to write this because i want us to understand it i said an altar is a system of authorization and then an altar is a platform where on legal grounds the realm of the spirit is allowed to make contact with the physical realm there are other illegal routes there are other illegitimate platforms but the legitimate platform where the realm of the spirit can find expression in this realm is an altar because according to the law of territory a spirit or an entity cannot enter another entity another territory without the configuration to suit that territory for instance a spirit should not be in the earth without a body that's against the law of territory if you must function in the earth realm as a territory you must have a body are we together now so every spirit including god is at the mercy of a body or an altar to find expression in a territory the first death recorded in the bible happened on account of altars two men brothers went to offer sacrifices and all of them created platforms that was way before the old testament adam had access to mysteries and he taught his children how to invoke the presence of god and it's not the way it is today there and then you will know whether what you did worked or not and the bible says abel did something and cain did something too and all of a sudden the sacrifice of abel ascended the heavens are we together now and then for cain nothing happened and then cain killed his brother and blood spilled upon the earth and he thought it was over but the bible told us that discussion continued in the realm of the spirit something about that activity called the presence of god and god said cain there is a discussion going on in heaven but this discussion is between me and blood so what is going on he said, am i my brother's keeper I said, ah, don't tell lies there is a witness standing in heaven here that blood a symbol of an altar is granted me authorization to probe you and because of that i'm going to curse you judgment still happen even after abel died listen very carefully to what i'm teaching you supernatural system of authorization an altar let me give you one more definition is where covenants are activated and maintained an altar is the platform where covenants are both activated and maintained a covenant cannot work without an altar it is an altar that gives life to a covenant it's impossible for altars to work covenants to work without an altar 
An altar is like the battery that powers this gadget, for instance. The potentials of this gadget is only seen when you slot in the battery. That's what an altar is. It gives life to a covenant. Now, write this down, please. Altars can be physical monuments. Altars can be institutions. And altars can be people. Altars can be physical monuments. Like we had in the Old Testament. They would erect stones. Altars can be institutions. Like the Jerusalem temple that was built by Solomon. He said, oh God, if anybody faces this temple and prays, Hearken to that person's prayer, not because of the rightness of the prayer, but a covenant that was enacted there. And an altar was raised to that effect. The reason why salvation, the covenant of salvation can work, is because there is an altar that was erected not just in the earth, in heaven. The book of Hebrews tells us that Jesus the high priest carried his blood to the most holy place in heaven and poured it upon an altar. That is still speaking today. That is the basis upon which whoever calls upon the name of the Lord, whether in you are sleeping, whether you are awake, it kicks that reality, you will be saved. Because there is an altar that eternally secures that. There are many platforms that God has created to allow spirit entities to find expression in the earth realm to come and assist men to come and empower men but if we do not understand those platforms then we will not be able to take advantage of it and one of it is what i'm talking about tonight an altar of prayer as a system of authorization an altar of prayer as a mystery that on legal grounds authorizes the realm of the spirit to influence the activities of men here in the earth realm please write this down the most accurate measure of the health of your spiritual life is your prayer life the most accurate measure of the health of your spiritual life is your prayer life not bible study no sir the most accurate measure of how healthy your spiritual life is is your prayer life no matter what else is working in your life if your prayer life is dead then you are not spiritual are we together anyone can preach anyone can teach but not everyone can pray never forget this it's very easy to preach very easy to teach but it's a sacrifice to pray any and everyone can preach any and everyone can teach but not everyone can pray because prayer is a sacrifice is a mystery let me tell you something god is so meticulous about the revelation of altars that he rules the world sitting on an altar the very throne room is like a shrine surrounded with mysteries the epicenter of the throne room is the very throne that he sits upon that throne you see is an altar it's what makes him the ancient of days he sits upon that altar and manipulates things according to his predeterminate counsel doesn't have to walk around heaven to find out who is rebellious there is a system that has been designed to ensure order an altar anyone who will walk in true dominion must function from the standpoint of an altar everyone who seeks to walk in true dominion must function from the standpoint of an altar tonight we are particularly looking at the altar of prayer the ministry of prayer is one that is largely hated by many either because of the spiritual energy 
that it involves or because of the sacrifice and the discipline that is involved in the ministry of prayer but scattered around scripture all through the bible are scriptures that encourage believers to pray and it makes them understand that their lives and their victories dependent on it in luke chapter 18 verse 1 the bible says he spake this parable to the end that means the goal of this parable was to teach men a lesson and the lesson is that men ought always to pray and not to faint always always not a circumstantial activity men ought always to pray and not to faint in matthew chapter 21 when you read from verse 13 the bible says jesus entered the temple and he saw people buying and selling and doing all kinds of things in the temple and he was angry and in verse 13 chapter 21 he scattered everywhere and said my house shall be called a house of prayer my house shall be called a house of prayer it's impossible to be a man of prayer and ignore the word but it's possible to be a man of the word and ignore prayer when the devil wants to deceive you he makes you look like you have an option to choose between prayer and the word and then he indoctrinates you and carries takes advantage of your passion for knowledge and keeps you to be cold and dry and lukewarm and all of a sudden you begin to search scriptures like a philosopher and there is no power no grace no efficiency every great ministry starts from the altar of prayer any ministry that does not start as a prayer ministry will not last it's impossible the ministry of jesus started as a prayer ministry the moment he was filled with the holy spirit he was driven of the spirit 40 days and 40 nights traveling in prayer and the bible says he returned in the power of the spirit all of a sudden his fame began to spread devils would fly around and say no 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 no! you have come to destroy us before our time the ministry of prayer in james chapter 5 verse 16 please give it to us james chapter 5 verse 16 i want you to understand this tonight is an admonishment and then we're going to pray james 5 verse 16 he says confess your faults to one another and pray for one another that he may be healed then he says the effectual prayer of a righteous man he says avail it much avail it much amplified says it is dynamic in its working it can produce results and we're going to examine these results that the prayer of a believer is not just an empty talk it's not just an exercise in futility it's not just a religious system to feel spiritual that every time men pray there is an effect now theologically speaking the classic scripture that is used to represent the activity of altars is Genesis chapter 28. We are not turning there for time's sake, but many of us know it. I'm just giving you a little theological background. Um, Abraham had passed across a region and the Bible says that he set up an altar there. And many years later, Jacob, his son, are we together now? A son in the flesh now, a, a generation, now was passing that place and the night time came and he felt look let me just lie down and sleep and the bible says he put stones together and lay down to sleep he didn't pray for an encounter he didn't beg for an encounter the moment he slept the bible says his eyes were open and he saw strange activities happening the angels ascending descending it was like a, a portal a ladder and at the top of it was god himself and he was surprised when he woke up he said wow this is a portal this is the gate of heaven i saw something that happened a portal an altar the lord was in this place and i knew not now watch this it's because jacob slept there and recorded his experience that we know that that place had an effect do you know that whether or not jacob slept there you can be passing peacefully 
and for whatever reason cross across that place and something happens to you all of a sudden you find out that the sickness just disappeared you didn't pray now you are wondering what happened now you don't know it was jacob's experience that helped us to understand that there was such a thing the same way elijah when he was about to leave he knew that there was a, an exact portal that can take men physically he went beyond the jordan and he said elisha asked i'm about to leave and right before his eyes he saw chariots when jesus was about to levitate to go to heaven he knew exactly where to stand when he, they watched him and he began to rise there are physical portals in the earth that open up to the realm of the spirit not visions physical places a man can stand here today and have encounters whether you are the prophetic or not which is understand this many people understand this i wish i had time to teach you on altars because i would teach you that one of the natural ways of establishing an altar is consistency of a practice within a region it opens up an altar consistency of practice within a region that that atmosphere is spiritually acclimatized the moment you practice something consistently you attract the spirit dimension of that thing to come and find out what is going on so if i keep killing people in a particular region i don't need to invite any spirit i create a portal the moment a spirit comes in partnership with me that becomes an altar that's why in many regions many campuses they have different regions some have prayer mountains some have we used to have years ago um in the campus there somewhere they call long tennis court that was a physical solid portal that's where you see people carry their rechargeable and their socks for mosquitoes and go there and lie down and say oh god if you don't help me i'm dead and by the next morning there is a miracle you find people just mind their business standing and start shaking because activities over many years there were people making use of that ground and it became sanctified angelic activities became so much there it was it was like how you do home cell because there are visitations and many members are within a region you dedicate a place and say look all of you within this region you can freely find expression here consistency can open up a portal are you learning something tonight that's how many of our parents made our homes certain portals every time they continued doing certain things and they did not know when they invited the spirit dimensions you see let me tell you consistency attracts the realm of the spirit consistent ask those who practice other religions you know how they invoke spirits enchantments the same word repeated over a long period of time how do they celebrate traditional festivals in many villages the people keep dancing doing the same thing for hours and then it becomes like they are supercharged at a point the spirit component of that activity has come i like you to say lord open my eyes say it open my eyes open my eyes there is a law in the dealings of god with men and he says whatever you yield yourself to he says you will become a slave of that thing have, have you have you are we together if i practice obedience consistently i have yielded my members to obedience i become a slave to obedience are we together now you see watch this if i steal this handkerchief watch this if i steal this handkerchief out of my volition it's not enough to bring the spirit of theft in my life no if i do it again and i do it again that i don't know i'm invoking a mystery by my consistency a time will come the spirit that operates on men 
will say i'm being invited within a territory it will look for the territory where the physical dimension of what is bringing it is the same way if i begin to pray i may not feel comfortable but as i'm praying i'm invoking a dimension of the operation of the spirit of the spirit of prayer and supplication a day will come in that place that dimension will be revealed in me supernaturally are you learning something because you see not all altars were consciously built but they are still altars so it is when i say altars that are destroying you it doesn't mean you have to go to your village and waylay your uncle and say if you don't tell us what you have done we will beat you no he may be innocent this is where the prophetic ministry must be guided because every time we talk of altar they think it must be traceable to a real experience no the mysteries that you do consistently are building altars and they eventually become invitations for spirits whether the spirit of god or any kind of demon spirit have you had an experience i'm not saying you should do it but you've seen it in ministries where somebody can come no church service just enter the church and come and lie down on the altar and roll maybe for a child and go back and have triplets now question was anybody preaching but because the the power and the presence of god has found expression upon that ground for a long time you have invited you have invoked a dimension whether service is at work or not that portal remains open all that it takes is your faith once your faith meanders that atmosphere it happens to you samuel was an altar he didn't have an altar he was an altar you never came near samuel and went back to say no a young man came around Samuel and stood naked prophesy morning till night that's an altar when Saul went and met Samuel they were looking for the donkey as soon as they saw Samuel they knew their lives were going to be altered I told you altars are not just physical monuments you can be an altar and that's one of the things that prayer does you don't build a monument your life becomes the activation of self listen the beauty of prayer is not just for you to continue talking for the rest of your life but that you get to a state of consistency where even in your silence listen you have become an altar spiritual activities can be happening around you so that as a living altar i activate possibilities just by walking you come around me and something happens to you i didn't directly pray for you you didn't even know you had that problem but an atmosphere that i was carrying implicated you why is prayer important why do we have to build an altar of prayer three reasons very quickly number one prayer is god's authorized system of communion and fellowship with him write it down prayer is god's authorized system of communion and fellowship with him the bible is very clear that the communion of the spirit the fellowship of the spirit what we call koinonia must be at work in the life of anyone to do business with god and that system of koinonia is through prayer prayer is one of god's authorized system not the only authorized system but one of the major authorized system for communion and fellowship luke chapter 6 let's take a few scriptures very quickly luke chapter 6 and verse 12 please give it to us luke chapter 6 and verse 12 then we'll look at matthew 26 
verse 36 and down to 39 is actually to 44 but we'll stop at 39 quickly Luke chapter 6 verse 12 look up everyone please it says and it came to pass those days speaking about Jesus now that he went out into a mountain to pray and continued all night in prayer to God communion Jesus was not just praying prayer requests like we do during miracle service remember he was God he still is God but he went to spend time all night communing communing give us Matthew Matthew 26 and verse 36 Matthew 26 verse 36 then come at Jesus with them listen this was uh, his passion was about to start then come at Jesus with them unto a place called Gethsemane and said unto the disciples sit here while I go and pray yonder and let's watch what the Bible calls prayer and he took from him Peter and the two sons of Zebedee and began to be sorrowful and very heavy 38 then he said unto them my soul is exceedingly sorrowful even unto death tarry here and watch with me please continue quickly and he went a little further and fell on his face and prayed saying saying this sounds like a communication a conversation my father if it be possible let this call pass of me when you read down to verse 44 he prayed the same thing three times prayer is God's authorized system of communion not just a platform for petitions prayer is how power is transferred to men it's an authorized system of communion it's your spiritual system of intimacy and intercourse in the place of prayer that's where the exchange happens between divinity Jesus was filled with the Holy Spirit but never manifested the power of the Holy Ghost after prayer the Bible says he returned not full of the Spirit but in the power of the Spirit in Luke 17 don't turn there John 17 sorry Jesus himself began to communicate with the father as usual and he says father the hour has come watch communion to prayer the hour has come glorify thy son that thy son will bring glory to you and then he began to converse look at all the platforms till today listen till today how Jesus advocates for believers in heaven is still through prayer the Bible says he's seated at the right hand of the Father and he makes intercession for the saints. Why will you intercede when you are already seated by the right hand? It's a system. It's not about proximity. It's a system of communion and communication. If you are not a man of prayer, you are not a woman of prayer you can be sure that the reality of communion and fellowship with the Holy Ghost that reality you see let me tell you something if you are not open to prayer you will never understand what we are saying you would think it's just um, I'm not just talking of corporate prayer corporate prayer is great but you must have the secret place that's where he comes to meet with you that's when he tells you things he cannot tell any other person the reason why you don't hear God is because you are not used to his voice in the secret place he has not trained you to hear him so you hear everything and you call it him I was counseling a couple some I think I don't know if it was last week and um, the mother was outside and the father came in with the daughters maybe they are even here listening to me and they held a little baby as soon as the baby shouted from outside the mother identified the voice and came to check what was happening with the baby and I said koinonia that's intimacy because there is a union that baby is sucking from the same mother their interaction the mother did not train herself to hear the voice she was implicated by that koinonia so anywhere she, there were many people families with their children but when she had her own he said my sheep hear my voice my sheep hear my voice meaning if you cannot ask hear his voice find out whether you are his sheep 
or not. Don't assume you are his sheep. Assumption is costly in the school of intimacy. You must verify that there is contact between you and God. There are pastors that don't pray. So they get angry. They think the manifestation of the power of God is magic. There are dimensions impartation will not give you. You must dig your well by yourself. You must create an altar, a system. You must gain mastery in the realm of the spirit. You must be used to the spiritual communication that has been asked. It's, it's like a tailor-made system of God reaching you. God must know how to reach you on serious informations. God must know how to reach you on trivial information. He must train your organs of interaction with the realm of the spirit. That place of training is the secret place. I will never trade anything for my time with him. That's where men are built. That's where there is an exchange. See, let me tell you. Holding a mic and teaching is not difficult. Holding a mic and preaching is not difficult. But communicating life... That one is a derivative of your altar. That's why we sleep in church. That's why our churches are full of dry bones. From the preacher to those listening. All dry bones. People stand and talk. They say something that should bless you and you wonder why it doesn't bless you. Because there is no altar. They are standing unassisted by the realm of the spirit. Number two, quickly. Why do we need the altar of prayer? Prayer creates a legal platform for God. Prayer creates a legal platform for God, angels, and the spirit realm to gain entrance and access. Prayer creates a legal platform mark the word legal it has to be legal the realm of the spirit is a legal realm the dealings of god with men are on legal grounds that's why god could not just pronounce men justified the system had to be followed to the latter prayer creates a legal platform for god angels and the spirit realm to gain entrance or access and intervene in the affairs of men and offer assistance to men whichever you want to write a platform for entrance legally i know that many of you are surprised why should god almighty need the cooperation of a man to step into the realm he limited himself in the creation of man let me show you two scriptures that i think will bless you psalms 115 verse 16 it's a popular scripture in the body of christ Psalms 115 and verse 16. Then give us Ezekiel 22 from verse 30 to 31. Psalms 115 verse 116. Can we read it together? One to read. The heaven, even the heavens, other versions say the heaven of heavens, are the Lord's. Read on. But the earth as a territory, has he given to where? Watch this. Let me give you a little explanation. If, if a Jimmy has a house, are we together? And he decides to rent that house to me. Now, it is true that it is still his house. But does he have a right to just enter anytime again? No. Even if he comes to that house, although it is your house, but there is a legal transaction that happened between me and you. So even as the landlord, you will still knock. And I have a right to tell you you are disturbing my privacy. And you will still go. So God is still the Lord of all creation. But he carved out a domain of his kingdom. Apportioned it to man. And it became scripturally incorrect for God to come to the earth without a man permitting him. That's why the Holy Spirit had to move Michael, Gabriel, to come and ask for permission from Mary before Jesus entered her womb. Mary could not just see her womb. No, 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 no. It was a discussion. This is what we want to do. Can your womb be available? The word was the permission. Be it unto me 
I authorize you. How shall these things be? Don't worry about the dynamics. Your womb will just don't be surprised when you find out your stomach is just protruding. Be it unto me. And he had to go to Joseph and say, Joseph, you are about to see something strange in your wife. Now I know that is going to shock you, but please, please, please don't drive her. There is a mystery she's carrying, and Joseph calm down. Look at how God had to go to the relevant people to ask for permission. Permission. One by one. While he was doing that, he was breathing upon Anna the prophetess to keep praying. Breathing on Simeon in the temple to keep praying. John the Baptist who would baptize and ordain Jesus. His father wanted to play with redemption. He thought he was just playing with a sacrifice. An angel appears to him and says, Mr. Man, your wife is going to have a child. The name is John and he, made, he spoke one kind of nonsense and heaven said, no, 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 no. This guy would disallow us, shut his mouth. He's a priest, meaning there is a grace for him to operate in that priestly office. Shut his mouth so that he will not say anything. Because words are padlocks and are keys. It can disallow and allow reality. So he said, shut his mouth. This, this guy wants to spoil this thing we are doing. And they shut his mouth, not as wickedness. As a strategy to make sure John arrives so that Jesus will be commissioned when John was born they said what shall we name him the wife said John they said no we've not had this name then they went to the dumb father now mr. man what was the last thing when you spoke with the angel what did you hear and he wrote on the book John is that a prayer and his mouth opened God said now you can say anything you want to say you have authorized heaven now watch this Look how hard it is for God to find expression in the earth. He must go around. That's why I taught you about the gift of men. God cannot be the author of death. Knowing how hard it is to find a man and find expression through him. For 430 years, God was busy preparing the man who will be a deliverer. Not if he promised Abraham captivity for 400 years but even God became limited for 30 extra years until Moses was trained are you blessed John the Baptist found himself in the wilderness the requirements to ordain Jesus he ate locusts and wild honey had sheep camel you know clothes and all of that and he came out and started baptizing baptized Jesus Christ and that was all and Jesus began his ministry listen every time it looks like darkness is prevailing over your life it is not that God is limited it is because you have not understood that until heaven is authorized God can do nothing about it the heaven of heavens belong to the Lord the earth has he given to the sons of men Elijah knew this that everything under the heavens was within the jurisdiction of men and he didn't go to beg God he went and said I lock up because this cloud that brings rain is under the heavens so I lock it up and I put the key in my pocket listen to what he said there would not be rain except at my word but the Bible, James, Apostle James, had a revelation of what he did. He said, don't think he just spoke grammar. He went and locked himself and prayed endlessly. He was a man of like passion. But he allowed God. Ezekiel chapter 22, verse 30 and 31. Please, quickly. Many of us have not been assisted by the spirit realm simply because we do not know that we have a role. We have a role to creating the portal that grants us access to assistance. And I search for a man among them. Listen, who is talking here? God to his prophet. Why will God be looking for men with over how many people at, at that time in the earth and is still applicable to us today? I sought for a man among them that should make up what? A hedge, a gap. They have violated something. 
they invoked a mystery that will force me now to punish them but in my kindness i'm searching for a man who can make me change my mind but i'm not finding any therefore don't blame me when your family remains poor it's not that i want satan to prevail there is something that happened in your family that lifted an altar of poverty and god keeps watching it ravage you for decades and god is saying i'm searching for a man who will rise up as an altar and cause me to act otherwise i was until i learned this i was surprised how god would just allow evil to happen like that and many people say ah but god can't you arise he said when you pray ask me that my kingdom should come what, what kind of thing is that ask me authorize me matthew 6 he was teaching them the beatitudes when you pray part of the content of your authorization should be that the kingdom come he said as i hear you say before my ears so will i do please leave it there i sought for a man among them that should make up the head and stand in the gap before me for what not just for an individual for the land that i should not destroy it but i found none so let's see what will happen in 31 pharaoh shall see them and shall be comforted over all his multitude even pharaoh and his army slain by the sword said the lord ezekiel 22 you are giving us a wrong scripture here that's what i gave you right ezekiel 22 30 31 please correct it and let's have it quickly media are we there please help help whoever is working we need some level of accuracy The scripture i'm looking for the scripture that therefore have i poured out that is what we just read therefore have i poured out my word indignation upon them i have consumed them with the fire of my wrath their own way have i recompensed upon their heads in other words it looks like i'm the one punishing them but they cost it they cost it that means the darkness in your family regardless of what people are saying oh god my name is john we are still dying and god is saying don't look at me as a wicked person i while i'm i'm pathetic there is a legal system operating this operation and somebody must arise and become a, an altar that activates something different and then you will now see my kindness listen god is not the one ruling this earth with the nonsense that is happening there are manipulations that are sending strange incense and we are receiving assistances from strange spirits that are antichrist and they are helping to destroy the world but he must find a people that's why men are a serious business to god many of us act unassisted many pastors act unassisted the realm of the spirit is available to assist but until we call until we call pray in tongues for one minute and say lord i call you i call you into my life and into my situation i don't assume you are aware i authorize you Lord, if you don't step in, something will go wrong in my life. My family is in trouble. For 30 years, nobody has risen in my lineage. Something is wrong. Every year, someone is dying. Yet there are prophetic words over my family. I authorize you. I authorize you. Shapras Katako Sibaria Sakato Bashiva. Ten graduates. No one is employed. 
Ten ladies, no one marry. All the men in the family are fed by all the women. I authorize you. I authorize you. Shabakoto sobakai. Lekete kota sapres katoshi paratia. Everyone in my family fails when a miracle is about to come. Another mystery kicks in. Everyone in my family must have a child out of wedlock. It happened to my grandmother. It happened to my mother. Now the devil wants it to happen to me. Hallelujah. Please sit down. Listen, let me tell you. I studied my life, I studied my lineage, I studied my family. And I saw things that I knew were not funny. I knew that those things were activations. And if I were to answer the call of God upon my life and prevail, something must happen. An altar gives life to a covenant. I saw things happening around my life, happening around my family. Let me tell you what most of us do. We identify what is wrong. Then we hope that a man of God will solve it for us. Yes, when you need a higher anointing, that's a different thing. But many of us just complain. Nothing is working in my life. My father graduates, my mother graduates, ten of us in our family graduates, nothing is working. It will continue like that because there is something making God look like a wicked person. I sought for a man in your family. It's not that he cannot convert everybody to become a Christian. I sought for a man. Who will raise an altar of righteousness that will allow me to do wonders. Wanting to deliver the nation of Israel from Egypt. Imagine how the heart of God bled when he saw the soldiers of Pharaoh weeping God's covenant people. Man, who is the man that I will send? In Ezekiel 37, Ezekiel stood before the dry bones. I thought God would say, bones, come back to life. He said, Ezekiel, you know this law of territory. I can't speak and it will just happen. So I will tell you. I will speak from heaven to you. Then you speak now in the earth. I prophesied as I was commanded. When God spoke, the bone did not move. When he prophesied as he commanded, all of a sudden there was a sound. Oh, God spoke to me in a vision. I, I had that dream. And God said, it's over. And you get up and just smile. You are joking. It will never be over. It was over in the realm of the spirit. What you do with that encounter is to stand up. Put that word and say, I legislate. I agree with you. Lord, my prayer and my dancing and my rejoicing is my agreement. That's why we have many dreams that never come to pass. You see 10 over 10 in the realm of the spirit. You see zero in the physical. You see a job in the realm of the spirit. You see demotion in the physical. God told you his intention in the realm of the spirit. Your carelessness aborted it in the physical. Take seriously what I'm saying. The same way you see that somebody is about to be sick or to be destroyed in your family and you get up and just keep quiet. And then the day something devastating happens, you say, hey, I saw this thing. That's a pain in the heart of God. Because he, he kept moving around your whole house by his spirit, searching for who was alert enough to communicate to him that this is a plot from darkness. When God did anything in the nation of Israel and did not tell the prophets, they were angry. Read your Bible. They said, God hid this thing from me. Number three. What is the third? Purpose of the altar of prayer. 
The altar of prayer is God's authorized system for enforcing dominion. God's authorized system for enforcing dominion and compliance. God gave man dominion over creation. It will take man exercising it. And prayer is the authorized platform for enforcing dominion. The Bible says we do not yet see all things under his feet. So although God has said you will rise up as an international man of God, but you will watch your life crumble to nonsense. Because before your arrival, another altar had been raised. And so it will take you enforcing dominion. I may come from this family, but I officially divorce myself from every nonsense that happened. No. The same way someone is born of a millionaire, and all of a sudden, the child starts enjoying the benefits even before being aware. That is the implication. Are we together now? A woman may be, for instance, um, having a particular biological disease, maybe a hepatitis or something, and give birth to an innocent child. And they say that child also has hepatitis. Did the child ask for it? No. Genetic condition. It's the same way what stopped your father, stopped your mother, you laughed at them and quarreled them, he's still waiting for you. Because until it is destroyed, listen, let me tell you something about altars. For as long as an altar is said, it's alive, the covenant will keep working. That's the concept of priesthood. Priesthood is a system to keep altars alive so that covenants will remain in force so that certain dimensions will continue to operate. There are many things that will not obey you until you force them to. There are many things in your life. Your destiny will not open up just because you think you should have a good life. That's a joke. It's a costly joke. You will not get a job just because you got first class. You will not be promoted just because you think you are due. Nothing is fair in this life. Everything that happens to you is what you force to happen through knowledge. Apostle, life is so unfair to us in the family. I sympathize with you, but this is the wickedness in the world that we live in. Listen, if you want to take your portion in this life, you are going to take it by enforcing compliance. Your church will not grow just because you think you are a nice pastor. Being nice is not the seed for results. The ability to exercise dominion. Are we together? Yes. It takes prayer. There are many people who don't pray. They just get up and, please come. You just see someone and, and you say, Pastor, pray for me. And your ego is on the line. And you know that you have not sustained power with God. No altar of prayer. And you just believe, you just lay your hand. And you lay your hands in the name of Jesus. The Bible says, yes, it said. Yes, the Bible said. But it takes your life to activate that reality. The Bible says they shall lay hands on the sick. God said it. I believe it. It settles it. You are a joker. You are a big joker. No, it doesn't settle it. No, it doesn't settle it. There is a dynamic to manifestation. Let's not mock ourselves. And you try to pray for this person. And all of a sudden, number one, he's not healed. Number two, it backfires on you. Are we together now? All of a sudden, you find out that the same thing you try to pray for him for the tragedies and calamities in his life you brought yourself through ignorance and the whole thing backfired on you we are walking in an environment that is surrounded with altars they give you a job and you enter the company you are not the CEO you are walking there 
You don't know what spiritual backings have been invoked over that environment. Until you create your own climate, you will be a victim of the default climate. There are people who fraternize with the devil. I will employ people to work for me, but they will never rise above me. So if the man goes down, everybody will go down to still keep him above them because it's a covenant. Now you got a job. Fresh from the university, your blood is hot. Everybody dances around church. You carry your certificate. And all of a sudden, you are earning 300,000, but you cannot bring out 10,000. You are not a drunkard. You don't pursue women. You don't know what happened. And all that swallows up that thing. That's what I'm telling you what has happened to many of our parents. So we think the solution is promotion. Oh God, promote me. Then your salary is now 400,000. The effect is still the same. But a woman who went to a man of God and is joining a little prayer group in her ignorance is flying Akara somewhere in the junction. And with that Akara, she trained seven children in school. It's not Akara. She was assisted by the realm of the spirit. No, sir. You don't train children with, with frying a car there. You can come and meet that woman and beg her for a loan of 100,000. And she will laugh. She will say, I'm coming. She will enter the room and bring it out. Yes, you claim that you are doing a white collar job. And the altar fights you. Listen. Please pay attention to what I'm telling you. Whenever you prevail in the realm of the spirit, an altar prevails. Believe what I'm telling you. Zaria has an altar. The effects of the altar in Zaria is predictable. You see it in the civilization of the people. You see it in what happens to people. The marginalizations that people never rise to certain dimensions. You came to Zaria and just thought it's all about going to church. No. You create your climate. You create your climate. That's why I said, yeah, though I walk, though I walk through a valley that has the shadow of death, I fear no evil because I carry another climate. Thy rod and thy staff, they comfort me. So you are in a place where people cannot live up to 40 years. You know, you are aware in your village, you see people dying like chickens, but you come with another order. You understand that the altar of prayer is also an altar that can contend with everything. And you are enjoying long life. You are enjoying grace. The person who married earliest in your family was 45. Are we together? And you look and you say no. You get married then you must spend 5 or 10 years to have your first child. If you sit down and keep watching it, and don't cry for assistance and don't force compliance it will never work I watch people and my heart bleeds at their perception of God which is based on their consistent sufferings they conclude that God is not a merciful God but he says I sought for a man that through the altar of prayer you can nullify certain activities legal ordinances that have been erected to speak you will be dreaming to believe there's nothing speaking against you now no sir you have lived too long to have created one by mistake you have lived too long on earth if you are up to one years old welcome to the reality of this life there has to be something speaking the bible says the sin of disobedience is like what witchcraft witchcraft what is the operation of witchcraft so we all want to rise it's a year of triumph and there is you think that the whole thing is your grandfather or grandmother and the day you hear that they are dead you rejoice the priesthood died but the altar is still alive you see that and the altar is fine and good doing well that's why you find out the solution is not just to kill people around the solution is through spiritual intelligence to lift up a spiritual fortification 
that vetoes everything brothers and sisters you will leave heaven on earth all of a sudden they will watch you ah, ah. you've been in zamfara for three years but you are returning as if you're in the uk you can fly to uk with that altar it will wait for you at Heathrow airport as soon as you are landing you enter and all the doors close people who never knew you are still manipulated by that altar to walk against you and you thought it's just something in nigeria and at the end of it you come back after five years looking like a thief where have you been uk are you sure yes why are you like this you know the way life is people smuggle their way and pass through rivers and deserts all to go to germany and uk whereas they think that's the greener pasture the greener pasture is the altar you raise that speak that speak that speak until jesus came there was a universal altar speaking against man vengeance vengeance but when jesus came he established another altar that spoke better promises better things i cannot live walking and living my life to chance and hoping that things will be all right i know things will not be all right if they will be all right you must create it you must create it so i enforce compliance will the devil leave you because he thinks god anointed you no no satan is not that cheap you are going to contend that's why he said put on the whole armor put on the whole armor there is a devil somewhere that will destroy your life destroy your ministry destroy your business destroy your destiny you get married to a very lovely wife you love her with all your heart they ask both of you will you love yourself you say yes the moment you married everybody brought their altars in holy matrimony now you are nice people this altar was designed to scatter the finances of whoever is standing with you and all of a sudden a good woman but you find out that your entire life starts going down and if you meet a a prophet who is not sound in scripture he will tell you your wife is the reason for your failure based on prophetic insight he has seen that there is an altar associated with her it's not a lie that is responsible for that downfall the individual may be the nicest person in the world but the altar will not change please hear what i'm teaching you and there are men no matter what happens if they marry maximum three years the wife must die and all of a sudden from the day the dear lady got married he may be a pastor apostle prophet how many men of god have altars fighting them they look around and they claim nothing is happening and they assume that because they took on the call for ministry god is too generous to allow them it's a joke no sir and this man gets married to this dear lady and all of a sudden she starts sleeping mysterious sicknesses she never had heart palpitations she will feel being pressed and she says my husband i don't know what is wrong i'm at since we got married i said are you trying to say i'm a witch look at what the altars are causing then two of them go for counseling and they meet a man of god who is sincere but no spiritual intelligence and he says look is how marriages are just take it easy pray together and it doesn't mean what he's saying and they say okay they say hug your wife in front of me they now hug themselves hold my hand darling they go back home the altar say welcome back by evening that man has slapped her again remember he promised in the presence of the pastor not to do it again but the altars brothers and sisters that's why god puts meetings like this because you can be sitting down now not knowing the deliverance that is happening you just feel something left me i don't know what happened and you go back and you who would have you would have blown somebody out of anger you find out that that force that comes upon you when you are angry that can make you insult anybody is no longer there because there is an altar this ministry you see is an altar we don't have an altar this is it's, a, it's an altar that's why you can talk against it in your secret place and start going down nobody is aware because the altar speaks all of a sudden 
a man of God will teach them how to raise altars and they will raise an altar of prayer and come and say look we are not bad people the devil is confusing us here you are a good woman I'm a good person we did not negotiate where to come from and all of a sudden day one Jekatopras Kataya now watch what is happening they are holding their hands and praying after that day they just feel good but nothing really happens I told you consistency is how spirits are attracted they too the, the man doesn't want to pray but she says honey remember we're on a project here you know what we, are le we have left at home let's do this thing after one week two weeks somebody starts having a dream somewhere after one week a spirit must appear to somebody somewhere and try to warn somebody an effect is being created in the realm of the spirit it's not a sign of weakness you can't sit upon hot fire and act as if it's not it can't be for too long listen to me that's what is happening to some of you now it was after your seven days of prayer you had a strange dream you have never had you thought it's a sign that you are losing it's a sign of victory something is happening in the realm of the spirit all of a sudden you went to sleep and you saw a vision of your mother when she was young your father when he was young the spirit of god is trying to show you something follow him but that's when the spirit of slumber comes god keeps saying for one month wake up by two o'clock there's something i'm doing in your life after two weeks you don't wake up again you see how we treat ourselves and you don't know that you are on the path of deliverance you reign you reign hello you reign you reign you reign hello you you reign, you reign, you reign, Listen, I promise you, if you listen to what I'm teaching you tonight, many of you, as soon as you go back, you will see the dream you will have this night. The devil hates what you are hearing because this is the age long mystery that has kept people in your family educated, but it's like they are not educated. A pastor, you are blessing people, but you never rise yourself. Do you know why? Because your victory is tied to your altar, not just your service. Your altar, I created an altar that is independent of Koinonia. And I said, No devil will come and destroy me. No, no. Watch this. Please come again. The two weeks we are praying. Shabra kato sodobas. Lembre koto shabaya. We are praying. We are praying. We are fasting. Something starts happening. One day there will be a breaking point in the realm of the spirit. If that prayer were two hours, a day will come it will become a vigil. Not by not because you like it. There will be you will break open a portal in the realm of the spirit and two hours prayer will become prayer till morning and your child will come and meet you and say daddy i saw a man in white and i saw the man doing something on your head spiritual activities are happening in the family all of a sudden you start seeing doors opening you love your wife like never before the devil told you the secret is to marry another one no sir you marry another one the altar is still the same there are pastors the altars that fight them and in first race of their ministry something happens people start living they have raised so many people but have not been raised by themselves there are altars. i've seen it fight people I've seen it fight people I know. These altars fought me for years. You go to sleep. A strange woman appears to you and sleeps with you in the dream. You get up and say, sorry, I don't know what is happening. Someone is about to marry you. Here comes the stranger again. What is bringing the stranger? Have you ever asked? You relocate to another house. He still looks for you and comes. Kabarota Sigata. They are about to promote you in the office. All of a sudden, your physical document disappears. 
physical document. How many students seated here? That's the mystery behind the results you are seeing. The ugly results that you are seeing. You love God and you are sincere. But that's the mystery behind the demonic things you see on that board. You are not that dull. You write your exams and go back. The altars continue writing things. Continue writing things. I know what I'm saying. Listen to me. You hear people coming here with four points. They were not born that way. They have tapped into a higher covenant. You see them surprised by their own results. They know it's not their efforts. That's why people join certain ministries. Join certain men of God. See people partner with certain anointings. This is the mystery of partnership. When you partner with an anointing, you access the covenant. The covenant, not the promise, the covenant. There are parents today, the moment you are 50 years, arthritis. You get up one morning, father cannot work, mother cannot work. Their entire pension is spent on it. It's not sickness, it's a programming. An altar is accurate with digital precision. Regardless of your foreknowledge, it will work. It will work. I have seen it destroy families. I have seen it destroy ministries. That's why certain ministries remain small. No matter how anointed they are, an anointed man with fire on his head, but he will not cross certain boundaries. Once they reach 200, something must happen. A wrong news will spread around. A scandal must come. Whether it's true or not. Have you not seen students? Their last and final exams. They will go and the spirit will start moving them. Carry something to the exam hall. They don't want to. But it's an altar. You are too weak to fight it. You will promise that you will not take it. And you take it. As soon as you are sitting, they just catch you. And they said your entire six, seven years cancelled. Brothers and sisters, it's an altar. There are families that as a family, they are victims of abuse. Everybody. Mother, father, brothers. All the daughters will eventually meet a man of God somewhere. And all the man of God will do is to destroy them. It will happen. They are scattered in every place, but their experiences are the same. You will see them and like them, but at the end of it, you must leave them with pain. They think is that the ministry is bad, but the issue is the altar. There are altars. You give birth to men, they must die. They must die. Something must kill them. No matter how healthy they are, they must die. Brothers and sisters, I have seen this evil. It exists. Tonight we are going to pray. Are we together? When it's time, I'm not going to give you a prayer point. When it's time to pray, we are going to pray. Tonight you are going to erect. Many of you, as you pray tonight, you will see what will begin to happen to you. I want us to lift up a fire in this place tonight. And say, Lord, this demon that molests me in my sleep, I can't be pretending that it's not there again. These animals that come to me in my sleep, no. I started a business well. Why is it that I start good things? Something evil must come. Lift your voice and pray.
tonight. I tear down altars. I use prayer as a system of authorization. This cause must stop. Hallelujah. Say after me in the name of Jesus. Shout it. Say in the name of Jesus. Tonight, I stand on behalf of myself and my family. And I declare that every altar that is speaking against my destiny. I tear it down tonight. Lift your voice and pray. Separate from God's sort of us. I tear it down. All that of delay. All that of barrenness. All that of failure. yourselves to two. Find, find a partner and hold a hand. Be serious, please. If the person by your side is not serious, leave him alone. We are doing serious business tonight. Find a partner and hold a hand. Shabakato labakaya. Embre tekas katafraska labakuria dabashu. Say after me in the name of Jesus. Say it again in the name of Jesus. Every legal access I have given for these altars to speak against me knowingly and unknowingly tonight I invoke the blood let the blood speak lift your voice and begin to pray every legal access every legal access every legal access I have given any altar of darkness, Shabbat Kata, Mate Lekotosia, even the love who comes shall be delivered, even the love who comes shall be delivered, even the love who comes shall be delivered.
Hallelujah. Hold the hands of someone else. Look for another partner. Hold the hands of someone else. Say after me in the name of Jesus. Say it again in the name of Jesus. Altars of poverty. Altars of delay. Altars of failure. I speak to you. In the name of Jesus. I tear you down. Release my destiny. Release my destiny. Altars of poverty. Altars of delay. Altars of stagnation. I speak against you. I speak against you. I curse you by the God of heaven. By the God of heaven. Hallelujah. We are really praying tonight. I'm seeing blood dripping on people. God is bringing so many miracles in people. We are still praying, please. We are still praying. Shalapakaya. We are still praying. Skatabariasa. I see altars on fire. We are still praying. We are making real contact with the realm of the spirit. Hallelujah. 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 Say in the name of Jesus. Altars that are territorial in nature. Fighting my destiny. Because of where I'm coming from, I prophesy tonight, your hold is broken over my life. Lift your voice and pray. Altars associated with territories. Associated with territories. I come against you by the God of heaven. I come against you. Pray, pray. I come against you. Hallelujah. 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 Please help those under the anointing. Hallelujah. Listen, there are some of you, your prayers were answered since many years. But it looks like it has not manifested because every time it's reaching you, an altar lifts up. We are going to call it back. Are you ready to pray? Say after me in the name of Jesus. Every delayed blessing that should have happened in my life and was delayed because of these altars tonight by prophecy I call you back to my life lift your voice and pray lift your voice and pray and watch the God of wonders on horizon the God of heaven and watch restoration happen in your destiny Respond relationships, respond finances, respond mandates, respond ministries. <laughs> Pray, pray, every 
Hallelujah. Hallelujah. You are going to call the name of your family members. Listen. I don't care how many. Call it. Listen. You are going to call them one by one. And say, I stand as an altar. And I bring you out of this dungeon. Lift your voice and pray. Call them. Call them. Call them. Mention them. By name. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Say in the name of Jesus. Be serious. Say it again in the name of Jesus. I speak to the east. I speak to the west. I speak to the north. I speak to the south. Everywhere my favor is. In the name of Jesus. I command it to my life now. Lift your voice and pray. You don't have to travel. Call it everywhere it is. Hallelujah. I want you to pray. Listen. I want you to pray and talk to God. Tell Him, Lord, I'm part of this apostolic family. The altar you have erected here must speak for me. I want my life to show it from today. Lift your voice and pray. Pray with understanding. And watch what happens to you. Pray with understanding. Pray with understanding. Understanding. Lord, I inform the altar that you have with your servant. Pray with understanding. Pray with understanding. Make it possible, Lord. La prenda que nos costó por este día. I declare it. Mala costó por este día. Hallelujah. Many of you may not realize what is happening to you. Please, I don't want you to idolize this teaching. No. 
is not about religiosity. It's about proper understanding and application. So it's not just coming to lie down here. No, 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 no. The altar is a revelation. We are going to pray right now and activate back our prayer lives. Listen, because many of us here, the only time you pray is when you are together with people. Satan started attacking you. He gave himself a five-year plan to attack your prayer life. He will never attack it at once. He can give himself a five-year plan and be destroying you. Say in the name of Jesus, I decree and declare that the spirit of prayer and supplication, the grace to pray, I receive it right now. Lift your voice and begin to pray. Fire. Fresh fire on my altar. Fresh grace to pray. Fresh grace to fast. Fresh grace to intercede. Fresh grace for warfare. I command every Pray a life around my life. Come back to life. Come back to life. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. One last prayer point, and I will pray for you. There are many of us, the Spirit of God started revealing things to you because you were meeting with Him every day. But something happened, no more visitation of the secret place and that portal closed over your life. No access to illumination. You used to be, you used to have projects that you and God are on. You can literally say we are on a faith project, but now there's nothing like that. Your life has become stale and barren. Some of you is when you started ministry. This this so-called thing called ministry. That's what destroyed you. We are going to pray a prayer of restoration. And the fire will fall upon you. I'd like you to pray. Say in the name of Jesus. Say it again in the name of Jesus. Say Holy Spirit. I ask that you manifest yourself once again in my life. Holy Spirit, I cry for intimacy afresh with you. Lift your voice and begin to pray. Intimacy. Spirit of the living God, do not be far from me again. Pray. Pray. Let it not be that you are just a stranger. We were closer than this and something happened. Hallelujah. Please lift your hands. Jalakosia Kata. I tell you there will be there will be testimonies upon testimonies. I pray for you now. I'm praying for you. In the name that is above all names. Everyone hearing me and standing here, whether inside or outside, you have prayed. If there is any altar as I speak now that is speaking against your life, at the count of three, I command those altars to catch fire right now. Please get ready, the power of God will come on people. One, two, three. I command those altars now. Be broken. Be broken. 
Challenging altars of failure. Listen, just I'm praying for you. Don't pray, just listen to me. Because I'm seeing people here. Failure, it has nothing to do with academics, it makes you fail in everything. I stretch my hands. May that fire anyone here who is a victim, that altar is speaking. I stand by the rod of a higher priesthood and I judge those altars now. 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 By fire. I judge those altars now. There are altars that cause men to see things and never handle it. You see a job. They tell you it's yours. Quarter to reception, everything changes. I don't know who belongs to that category, but in the name of Jesus, the bros kataka so much tata la para kotos kopras kadavaria takosia. Inside and outside, following online, anyone who has been a victim of total failure and disappointment, right now in the name of Jesus. That fire comes upon you in the name of Jesus. That fire comes upon you in the name of Jesus. I command total deliverance. Help them, help them please. Total deliverance. In the name of Jesus Christ. Put down your hands. Ladies, keep your hands lifted. I will tell you why I'm praying for you. There are many ladies, let me tell you. Many people don't know why. Things don't work especially for ladies it's not because you are ladies and it's not because you are bad it's because many ladies are spiritually ignorant of what they represent in the realm of the spirit a lady is not just another human being who is not a man no it's more than that a lady is the chiefest point of entrance even among men that's why she has a womb the only lady a lady is a gate in the realm of the spirit it's not just a human being Keep your hands lifted. That's why demons look for them. That's why spirits look for them. That's why altars speak against them. It may not be caused by you, but I'm praying for you. Keep your hands lifted. You may not understand what is happening. Lord Jesus, I'm praying now that any one of our sisters here whose family and destiny is under siege. Shakas, Anyone who made a covenant with the earth for your destiny, anyone who passed through fire to make a covenant with your destiny, in the name that is above all names, I decree and declare upon every lady now, be free in the name of Jesus. Be free in the name of Jesus from those yokes, those yokes that cause fibroid, those yokes that cause fibroid, those yokes that cause lungs around your body, those lungs, those barrenness, I cut it by the God of heaven, I cut it by the God of heaven. Hallelujah. I'm seeing 11 ladies. The Lord is opening my eyes. Listen now. I'm seeing rings on all their 10 fingers. And this is a very serious demonic case. And the Lord wants to set them free now. You will not know it. It's not something you know. One of you used to see it. Physically, you see rings on your hands. In the name of Jesus. 11 people. Ladies especially. I'm praying now. Some are inside. Some are outside. doesn't matter where you are. The Lord is asking me to stretch my hands. Lord, I pray, whoever came into this meeting, whether online, offline, and belongs to that category, 
in the name of Jesus as I'm praying now I command I'm praying now the fire will fall on certain people 11 in all I see Lord let it be right now I, I break that marriage I break that spiritual marriage I break that spiritual marriage my God my God my God my God I break that spiritual marriage there's one of them you should have married but this word stops everybody that comes around you I command it broken right now 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 Hallelujah. Our time is gone. The Lord is asking me to minister to someone here. Somebody comes to you in the night physically. I'm not talking of vision. Physically. You feel somebody lying down around your bed. Sometimes sleeping with you. You are feeling it. This is not guesswork. This is something you know is happening. Wherever that person is. Right now in Jesus name. I stretch my hands. There is no escape. In the name of Jesus, whether inside or outside, you are in this category now. I command judgment. Judgment on any strange spirit. Judgment on any stranger. Judgment on any stranger. In the name of Jesus Christ. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. I don't know, but we're rounding up. Please just, just be patient with me. I'm hearing in my spirit, Yoruba people. Yoruba people, there is, there is something, a deliverance that God is bringing now to Yoruba people. You know how God acts as I'm speaking now. Everyone associated with that territory, I place the word of God now. In the name of Jesus, let that sword of deliverance, I command that double-edged sword to locate everyone from the southwestern part now who is in need of territorial deliverance I command it now inside and outside in the name of Jesus no escape no escape for any power of darkness yeah, no, no, no. Yeah. Every mark of this favor that is on anyone's life here. You watch what happens to your life from this meeting. Anyone carrying any mark of this favor, where men should bless you, something about you becomes an irritation. I command that mark to be erased from your life now. Ah, I command that mark to be erased from your life now. I command that mark to be erased from your life now. I command that mark to be erased from your life now. I command that mark to be erased from your life now. I'm watching what is happening from the spirit realm, not the physical realm. When you see me keep praying, it's because God is doing something. I command that mark to be erased from your life now. I say it again, I command that mysterious mark to be erased from your life right now. Anyone here who has any member of your family that has refused to give birth, they have tried and tried and the devil would just not let them have a child. Either she will not take in completely, or she would take in and then mysteriously lose the child. Or 
the man will not be able to get her pregnant i don't care what situation but please even if you are not the one standing for them i'm praying distance is no barrier i stretch my hands now and i decree by the altar of prayer we authorize angelic assistance to those people right now we authorize angelic assistance right now hear me it was an angel that came to assist mary to get pregnant he showed up and said i was sent your own is to just agree and she said be it unto me and she got pregnant i declare and declare that any manifestation and encounter that they need to go through to have their child i command it to happen now in the name of jesus Let me pray finally for your finances. I believe in God's people empowered. There is no triumph when everything around your life is not working. I want to speak because some of you are titers. Some of you are sowers. Some of you bless, honor God's house. But simply because of certain systems. That manifestation can happen as laziness. That manifestation can happen as disfavor everywhere. In the name of Jesus, I decree and declare, nobody here is too young to prosper. Don't listen to that nonsense. Nobody here. I'm not talking of business. I'm not talking of a job. I'm talking of a system in the spirit where God will lift you in a way that will make you afraid. I decree and declare now. As I'm praying for you, I'm also praying for families. Because there are families that need help as a matter of emergency. I pray that the demon sitting on the financial destiny of anyone here, sitting on the financial destiny of any family, I clear it out of the way right now. I clear it out of the way right now. I clear it out of the way right now. I clear it out of the way right now. Right now. Right now. Right now. In the name of Jesus Christ. Listen. Listen, I've shared with you my encounter. I've seen that spirit that they call Mammon. I've seen it. I've shared it here. Some years ago when I was praying, and all of a sudden, my ceiling disappeared. And all of a sudden, I saw a giant creature, like a, as tall as a mango tree, standing, looking like, um, like, like, like a dinosaur, a sea creature, with a tail. And the tail was another living thing on its own. It could detach from that creature and move. And the eyes were as big as a human head. Two red fierce eyes. And he was looking at me. And he said, so you think you can bring God's people into blessings. And that was the end of the encounter. That was, it was that day I knew that wealth is spiritual. It's not about what you do. It's about what is backing you. You can do everything to a pole. There must be a spirit assisting you. I call for the ministry of the Holy Spirit over your finances and I command extraordinary results from today. I command strange results from today. I command strange favor from today. I command strange results from today. Strange encounters with destiny help us. In the name of Jesus Christ. I want you to wave your hands to Jesus. The Bible says to pray with thanksgiving. Tell him thank you. Thank you. This is part of a fruitful prayer. You don't round up a prayer with amen. You round up a prayer with genuine thanksgiving. Lord, I thank you. I know it is done. I receive it because you are faithful. This is the confidence that we have. That when we ask anything according to his will, he heareth us. It's our confidence. Hallelujah. Now keep your hands. Please look at me. I want to encourage everyone. As much as God grants you grace, I want you to use this week. Make sure that no day passes without you creating time to blast in tongues at least an hour. At least an hour. No, if you think you don't have the strength, find somebody who God has graced. At least an hour. Tuesdays you are sure you can come and our prayer department is there praying. You don't have to be a part of the, the a member of the prayer department. Join them. 
because it's a season where we are breaking things through breaking things through in the realm of the spirit every day take out time i would recommend night times for you because most people are working or as students you may not have the luxury of time to get up in the morning or afternoon but you can maximize night times one hour out of 24 at least will not kill you i want you to cultivate that atmosphere carry that consciousness that the, my prayer is creating an altar and that i am an altar myself i refuse to allow the devil play games with your destiny in the name of jesus christ now keep standing everyone i want to make an altar call now very quickly there are people here probably you came here for the first time tonight please let me have attention inside and outside and there are people here who the devil has been playing around with your destiny for many years and when you came for this meeting tonight as the word of god was coming the lord was speaking to you that we need to start afresh again there are such people here right now i want to give you an opportunity to hand your life over to jesus or others who you were once a serious believer but something happened around your life very quickly we have just two minutes for this wherever you are inside or outside there must be somebody handing his life to jesus make your way right now i want to pray for you let's appreciate them as they come don't wait for anybody to come you are the first person somebody is coming clap for them inside outside if you're outside make your way in quickly god bless you god bless you young and old keep coming if you're outside please rush and come in rush and come in clear the way for them those coming from outside hurry up please hurry up quickly 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 it's not something that should take forever for you to think about you should know immediately young and old make your way to jesus the bible says the name of the lord is a strong tower the righteous run it to it and they are saved keep coming keep coming koinonia celebrate them let's encourage them as they come hallelujah i want to appreciate you for the boldness to come and make a declaration to jesus listen this is not just a poem you are reciting i want you to mean it from the depth of your heart because it will start a new dimension of living for you lift your right hand high to the heavens let the devil see it and say after me lord jesus say it again say lord jesus tonight i have heard your word i believe in you i ask you to forgive my sins i ask you to cleanse me with your precious blood i believe you died for me i believe you rose again for me i receive eternal life into my spirit and i declare that from tonight i am a child of god i keep rising and i never go back again the power of sin the power of satan the power of the flesh is broken over my life forever in the name of jesus keep your hands lifted father i stretch my hands to these dear ones and i pray oh god that you seal this decision with the presence of your spirit let tonight be an encounter that will remain forever in their lives i declare their sins forgiven and oh god i decree and declare that from today they begin a fresh and a new walk with the holy spirit in the name of jesus christ amen and amen a big congratulations to you now i want you to quickly follow a lady waving her hands all of you together in concert just walk this way follow the lady waving her hands and um, they'll take you outside and attend to you very very briefly very quickly please everyone quickly quickly this is a powerful secret of dominion this is a powerful secret of legislature in the realm of the spirit the mystery of strongholds second corinthians chapter 10 second corinthians chapter 10 and verse 4 10 and verse 4 
when you read from verse 3 it says for though we walk in the flesh it says our warfare listen carefully this is Paul speaking now one who was granted access Paul called himself a steward of the mystery he didn't call himself a preacher Paul didn't call himself there were people who were called men of God in the Bible an example Elijah an example Samuel Paul never called himself a man of God he called himself a steward of the mystery one who was given access to the mysteries that so that when we listen to him we might be partakers of that fellowship called in a participation to come into an understanding of that mystery and this was one of the mysteries he said for though we walk in the flesh our warfare is not physical listen carefully our warfare is not physical and then he says in verse 4 it says for the weapons of our warfare so warfare is for sure but he's guiding you on how to engage it listen living is warfare prosperity is warfare growth is warfare but he's giving us the character of this he's saying the weapons of our warfare are not carnal but mighty through god and the entire arsenal is supposed to achieve one purpose to pull down not enemies strongholds what kind of warfare is this that the enemy is not a human being he never said to pull down spirits think about that he didn't even say to pull down demons that this warfare God had to give you the tools to use. And he says this fight is not against flesh and blood. That the fight is not even against demons. Not to pull down demons. To pull down strongholds. This is warfare now. Next verse. Casting down what? Spirits. Demons. Satan imaginations the greek word yes sir and every high thing not high person high thing high information that exalted itself against the person every high thing that exalts itself above another kind of knowledge this is warfare that god gave you these tools please get what i'm teaching you tonight that this fight is not against flesh and blood but that this fight huh, God gave you these spiritual tools to pull down strongholds to cast imaginations to dethrone high things and then to bring thoughts strongholds imaginations high things thoughts this is warfare Bible says a spirit can live in a man. Follow me carefully. A spirit can live in a man and that there is a possibility of casting that spirit out of a man. Is that true? Where does the spirit go to when you cast the spirit? The Bible says it moves around. Dry lands everywhere. Is that true? And then it becomes restless. What makes it restless? Then the Bible says after a while it will turn back he never said i will go to the body he said i will still go back to my house now question a spirit is somewhere no prayer no prophet no anointing something casted it from there back into a human being that required a man of god to cast it out what made the spirit uncomfortable with an environment that it left on its own without the particular desire of a man to, to drive it think about this if this guy has a demon spirit and i lay hands on him and cast out the demon spirit i thought if the demon spirit is somewhere somebody should be able to drive it back but the demon says on his own that environment without any human intervention does something to that demon spirit that makes it restless 
the same way a man of God's anointing is driving it and he starts moving back and says, it is even better compared to what I am facing here, it is better to go back to that human being. In Matthew chapter 4, you also find that account in Luke chapter 4. Watch this. When Jesus went to fast, I want to tell you certain things about strongholds and about this. We are going to pray. But I want, there are things that believers, that's why I told you I struggle to share what I'm sharing. There is a whole series on this that is coming. Jesus, the Bible declares that Jesus is the embodiment of the Godhead. Is that true? And the Bible calls him full of grace and truth. Now Jesus goes to fast. As you mean, Jesus is fasting and Satan is waiting for him. Instead of the fasting to drive demons, the fasting was attracting Satan. Listen. <laughs> Satan is not afraid of Jesus. Satan is not even afraid of the fact that Jesus is fasting. This is Jesus being the Son of God alone should command respect. Then fasting for 40 days, no food, no water. Satan is not afraid. Then Satan comes to Jesus, looks at Jesus. Jesus is looking at him back. I thought Satan would be rolling and shouting and moving up and down. Church has never scared Satan. The presence of God has never scared Satan. Listen carefully. <laughs> just, just take it in first like an injection. Let it enter and settle down. Then we'll continue. In the book of Job, Job chapter 1, the Bible says, Once upon a time the sons of God went to show themselves to the Lord. Is that true? And the Bible says, Satan, at that time he had fallen. Otherwise God would not ask him, where are you coming from? Is that true? Hmm. Satan goes before God and he said, where are you coming from? He said, from moving to and fro the earth. What location? The earth. And he says, have you considered my servant Job? And then this is what Satan says. There was something you put around Job. He never said Job's prayer. He never said Job's fasting. And every time I came to Job, I saw that there was something that surrounded me that I could not even touch him. It made me uncomfortable. I could not even touch Job. And he said, take that thing away. What, what, how are we talking? What was the answer to us? It did not make me more powerful, not make you more powerful. Whatever it is, and this is what you said, in the days of my youth, when the hands of the Lord was upon my tabernacle, those secrets put to the condition in the realm of the spirit. And the Bible says, Satan came, not a demon. He came by himself. When that God was bringing up, the fortifications were there. He was a man of prayer. He was a man of power. Satan feared Job. But he stood before God. Satan feared Job. But he went before God and stood. He said, I can stand before this God. I can stand before this God. This is your Bible. I'm not reading the. It's your Bible. Are you getting blessed? And then all of that began to happen. And Job's life went down. And then Job's life came back again. Now watch this. In Luke chapter 4. Let's go back to Jesus. Give us Luke chapter 4. Jesus. Just pray and fast. You are 
yourself from God. He said, I have said this so. That was upon the holy mountain of God. Now that God come and that is the midst of the story.
the one that will provide. The people were surprised. The 
when you are about to find water. Don't just focus on that spirit. Try to find out what is the name of the spirit. The spirit is on a side. The
Jesus. Say it again in the name of Jesus. Every leg of access I have given for these altars to speak against me, knowingly and unknowingly. Tonight, I invoke the blood. Let the blood speak. Lift your voice and begin to pray. Every leg of access.
listen, there are some of you, your prayers were answered since many years, but it looks like it has not manifested, because every time it's reaching you at all listen, we are going to call it back, are you ready to pray? Satan in the name of Jesus, every delay blessing, that should have happened in my life and was delayed because of these altars. Tonight, by prophecy, I call you back to my life. Lift your voice and pray. Lift your voice and pray. And watch the God of God that's on your life, the God of heaven. And watch my commotion. And when you are ready,
many people don't know why things don't work, especially for ladies. It's not because you are ladies, and it's not because you are bad. It's because many ladies are spiritually ignorant of what they represent in the realm of the spirit. A lady is not just another human being who is not a man. No, it's more than that. A lady is the chiefest point of entrance, even among men. That's why she has a name. The only lady, a lady is a gate in the realm of the spirit. It's not just a human being. Keep your hands lifted. That's why it's not a for them. That's why it's not a gate for them. That's why all has to be against them. It may not be caused by you, but I'm praying for you. Keep your hands lifted. You may not understand what is happening. Lord Jesus, I'm praying now. That any one of our sisters here, whose family and destiny is under siege,
Thank you for watching our entire video today. If you feel you can bless someone, please join us and spread the gospel by sharing this video on your social media.